Hello. Hello, 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 hello. Anyone who's watching, thank you for joining us. Welcome to We Are Rolling in Thunder D&D, and this is our new game, Legends of Elderon. The first episode of which I'm joined here by my, my usual friends, Adam and Chris and Joe, but I also have over here our new DM, Kyle. Kyle, would you like to introduce oh. yourself? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll do a, a quick introduction of myself. Uh, I am Kyle West. Uh, I have been selected to be the, the new uh, torturer of these, these fine groups of individuals and players. Uh, I've been DMing for uh, going on about 10 years now. Um, uh, man, I, I, it's fantastic. I love it. Uh, I love telling stories. I love interacting with, with uh, other fe fellow players, and storytellers, and just seeing the kind of wacky situations we can find ourselves getting into. And and I love seeing players and characters become heroes. And that's what we're all here for. Um, if you if you're interested and you want to see some other work that I do, uh, every other Monday night uh, I, I run a game called Gods of Ether on Twitch as well. Uh, I'm sure a link will get Chris to that eventually. Uh, yeah. But it's a similar setup, uh, similar world, so practically the same world. So if you want to see some other shenanigans going on uh, in the same time frame, time period as these guys here, then feel free to check it out. Awesome. We will auto host your channel and, and whatever. So if you ever want to see and you know where it is, you can always come here and it'll send you there. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be starting in this world of Elderon today. Carl's been brewing up some kind of campaign for us and I'm very excited but I think what I'm going to do is we're going to play the intro video for you now and then, <gasps> oh, I'm so excited. And then you can talk a little bit about it afterwards so let's roll that now <laughs> to lose that faith as we destroy your world. <laughs> I'm very excited about this, but Carl, can you tell us a little bit about uh, what you expect from this campaign and sort of what you've got planned? So, uh, really, uh, as far as what I've got planned, um, hopefully, Without spoilers, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I would like to see come uh, with, with you guys is I would like to see one of my favorite things that I love about b and and the, the the types of stories that, that this game allows us to tell um, uh, that, that just really gets my rocks off. I, I love a good zero to hero story. I like seeing players come in with, with these low level characters who, you know, 
uh, just run in the mill schmucks. And they're not they're not part of anything big. They're they're just trying to get by in their day to day. And then through the course of actions that they take, and the people and NPCs who they interact with, they get caught up in in this grand adventure that that catapults them to to levels of heroism that many individuals in this world are are just aren't, aren't able to achieve. So that's what I hope to see with you guys. Uh, as far as what I've got planned, honestly, the secret here is I don't really have a whole lot planned. Uh, I've got some, I have some global tensions going on in the background. I have uh, 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 some NPCs doing certain things like, as of right, as we're speaking right now, there are there are machinations being turned. But whether or not your players, your, your characters, uh, fall into those those machinations, we've we'll yet we've yet to see. So, awesome. I'm very excited. Okay, so. I don't, do we need any more introductions? I don't think that we do. Should we, should we begin? How, how do you I want to throw us into this, DM? I think it's time to introduce the world of Elderon. Let's do it. <gasps> oh. Let's okay. begin. Welcome, everyone, to the Natharian Federation. The year is 327 IR, or Imperial Reckoning. The region of the continent of Arion which you find yourselves in is divided both by the majestic Anabraxis mountain range and political powers. The Vesnani Free Cities, a collection of city-states united under the Alabaster Assembly, has recently been vaulted into prominence on the world stage with the discovery of a new and powerful resource deep within the belly of the mighty Anabraxis, a rare form of pure and condensed raw magical energy that has come to be known as ether. Beyond the Anabraxis, to the east, lies a massive region known as the Gibrialis, home to the majestic Kingdom of Brookhaven. Eastern Gibrialis, the lands east of the serpentine Minotogus River, houses the expansive waste and calamitous ruins of Tunbrunda and is overrun with all manner of beasts and terrors, relics from a war fought against the fell dragon Crayfang, the harvester of sorrow. A war whose scars still mar the landscape to this day. Northward, you will find the Lunwasser Tundra Lands, a lawless realm of perpetual ice and snow that is home to warring giant clans and the Golar Mormon, a people of dwarfish descent that have been waging a centuries-long crusade against the giants in an effort to reclaim their ancestral homes. However, this story begins within the territory of Western Gibrialis, within the boundaries of the Kingdom of Brookhaven. Emerging 15 generations before, the Holy Kingdom of Brookhaven has slowly spread to encompass the surrounding societies of the region, absorbing the people of the Gibrialis Plains and the Stone Garten Valley, before finally conquering the Sigalis clans and taking the whole of Gibrialis region under its unifying banner. Under the rule of the current king, Damian Brookhaven, now in his 42nd year, most are left with their own devices. You are free to pursue your own well-being and happiness. The crown only takes a tithe of what you produce and earn, you follow its laws, worship its gods, and bow to install local leadership. In return, citizens of the kingdom are protected from the chaotic horrors and scattered evils that stalk the edge of civilized lands. This arrangement has led to a prof prof uh, prosperous century for the kingdom, especially the political elite. Our story, however, begins much smaller in the southern regions of the Gibriel Plains, just beyond the borders of the Trade Garden, in the small rural town of Stonewater. Bordering the, cray, the, the cold gray waters of the northern Innistrada Ocean, this town has recently come into prominence quite unexpectedly. Two weeks ago, the peace and stability of the Notharian Federation was tested and shaken when the distant Aurelian Empire, an emerging power on the far western shores of the Aryan continent, waged a land assault against the small and defenseless town of Bassiafell in the southern reaches of the Besnani Free Cities. In an effort to escape the sufferings of war, thousands of citizens flocked eastward in hopes of finding refuge under the protections provided by the Blue Rose of Brookhaven. As the masses of hopeful refugees arrived in the sleepy hamlet of Stonewater, the local leadership now desperately seeks to bring order to this sudden influx of chaos to very little success. Here, in this once sleepy trade stop along the King's Road, a handful of wandering destinies begin to intersect. We begin in the early hours of the morning on a Tulis day in the cool autumn month of Selafel in the messy common room on the first floor of Happy Cooper's Inn. You are all awoken 
with a cacophonous sound of something heavy hitting the hard wooden floors of Happy Cooper's Inn. Even in the early hours of the morning, the unrest that fills the common room the night before has not lowered in intensity with a night's rest. As your eyes begin to focus and the last remnants of sleep drain from your visions, you now see the source of the loud noise. A human male, who appears to be in his late 30s to early 40s, stands in front of an upturned table near Happy Cooper's modest bar. A collection of broken plates and dinnerware clutter the floor around his feet. Behind him huddle two small children, one male, one female, both of them clutching onto his pant legs as the man stands waving his hands in frustration towards a young, well-dressed human woman who, despite the loud shouting coming from the man, remains calm and collected as she addresses him. I understand your concern, Mrs. Mr. Devlo, but there are many others who find themselves in a similar situation. I empathize with you and your family. I truly do. No one Stonewaters could have predicted what happened in Bassiafell, but everyone here is doing everything they can to help ease the situation. I ask that you please remain calm. At this point, another man, a bit older than the first, stands up. We've lost everything, and now you've got it huddled up like rats. We can't live like this. My poor mom has back problems. She can't sleep on the floor another night. Another voice joins in the crowd. Ah, fuck your mom! A large <laughs> muck flies through the air. Uh, <laughs> or Laskin, uh, as you're opening your eyes and you're seeing all this happen, I need you to make me a deck 30 saving throw. Oh, oh straight in! Hold <laughs> on. Okay, okay, yeah. hold on. That is a hot start. <laughs> Dexterity saving throw. <laughs> yeah. How do I do it? Uh, you just, there you go. Uh, there you go. Okay. It's a 12. 12. Uh, you, you, your eyes come to full focus, uh, and, and, and uh, the, the vision, uh, the, the dreariness of sleep manages to fade from your vision just as you see this mug flying towards you. You dodge your head to the right, and it clatters into the wall behind you, and it, it splatters and makes a lot of loud noise. Bloody hell, at man. this point, at this point, another cacophonous sound rings through the room. A half-orc male, deep green skin with short brown hair, stands next to the woman. A small handheld device in his hand, the source of the sound, and is pointed upward. A small wisp of smoke trailing out of it. Everyone calm down now. The next person to raise their voice or throw something is getting thrown in the brig. The abdress is doing everything in her power to ensure all your concerns are addressed. Now, if you or a loved one have an ailment that needs looking at, come see me or the apothecus 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 Baruta. And if there's any of you who are able to assist in this matter, come see me after breakfast. All right. The four of you who are now, you find yourselves in the, the common room of Happy Cooper's Inn. Uh, you have just recently arrived the day before. Uh, those of you who have, the, the group that you've been traveling with, the refugee group, uh, arrived at Stone Garden, and you, you find, when you arrive, you find yourself to be, this is a small hamlet of a town, um, and the group you traveled with from, from Bassiafell is numbering well above the, the thousand person mark. Um, since your arrival, uh, the town, the people of the town have been desperately trying to accommodate uh, those of you who have been fleeing the attack on Bassiafel. Uh And uh, a good, about a hundred or so of you were able to find refuge for the night in Happy Cooper's Inn, in the common room. Uh, and you, as you all are coming to, come, coming to uh, being awoken and to the, to the, the sound of, of, of unrest, uh, you find, I mean, the, co the common room is filled to the brim. There's little to no seating arrangement or uh, seating places. Um, and yeah, four of you together. So how about we have everybody introduce themselves? <laughs> Why don't we start with the guy <laughs> who dodged the, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I want to talk to the guy who dodged the, uh, dodged the mug. Let's talk to last one. Um, okay, should I describe myself or introduce myself sure. in character? Okay, well, describe so yourself. I am, I am, um, or Laskin. I am a dragonborn with sort of uh, reddish, almost orange scales and like big feathers coming off of my head and on my tail, uh, like brightly coloured. Uh, I've got this sort of um, quite stiff um, black coat, uh, like coat and trousers with like gold piping, which is like um, surprisingly, you know, uh, rich looking for someone who is amongst a bunch of refugees, I guess. Um, uh, I'm not really wielding any weapons of any kind, and I'm, I'm quite small and scrawny as well. Definitely not an imposing figure. But light on my feet, enough to dodge a mug. 
<laughs> and uh, you find you, you were able to find uh, a corner of the room uh, from the night before to to rest your weary head from the the, the previous day's travel, and it took about five to six days uh, on a journey from Bassiatel to here, uh, as you were escaping the attack there. Um, you most of that was 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 traveled by day, sleep by night on the road, and this was the first time in a few, in about a week or so that you were able to to get a roof over your head for the evening. Uh, and uh, of the group of individuals that are surrounding you, you see uh, there are there are three other individuals who uh, also would like to introduce themselves. Let's go ahead and go with uh, uh, let's go with Hansel next. Cool. So as you look over at Hansel. Um, at full height, he, he cuts a relatively imposing figure. I mean, he's six one, six six foot, um, smallish for a for a high elf. For that is what he is. Um, roguishly handsome, towel, uh, tousled, brown to dark hair. Um, although he is what you traditionally, um, objectively, call attractive, there's a darkness and a deadness behind his eyes. If you look at his eyes, they're kind of a shade of grey, and he carries himself with almost an air of feeling but like he looks down on the people he's surrounding. And yet he is, as part of this um, world, surrounded by refugees. Looking at his clothing, you'll see that it's dark with um, hints of red and gold throughout it, um, clean and and rich. Um, in the way that it looks, but you can see it's fairly threadbare. It's not been looked after. It's clean, but it's gone through some wear. Um, and he's pushed himself further to the back in that corner area. And if you watch him, you'll see that he hold, hunkers down a little bit. He doesn't hold his full height, despite being that six foot six one. Um, and he's just watching the crowd, surveying it very, very quietly. Okay. Let's go with Katen next. Katen, would you describe yourself? Yeah, <clears throat> so Katen is a uh, six foot three half orc. Um, he is has got kind of light greenish eyes um, from his father's kind of uh, human side. Um, he is wearing plain clothes, dirt under the fingernail, kind of half um, half a day's beard growth. Um, he's got kind of long black hair with an undercut on the sides. Um, He's wearing a pair of garden shears on his back and two swords at his waist. Um, his clothing is very simple, um, obviously that of a farmer or some sort of villager. And um, he's currently holding council with another number of elder villagers as well. And counsel to Hansel, you know, kind of lost it strikes quite an intimidating pose. There, there, there is a kindness behind his eyes as kids and stuff run around. Um, and yeah, kind of since the evacuation, he's been basically kind of guiding these, these, these this group of 150 villagers and farmers from Bersia Fell, just outside Bersia Fell, um, to the safety of Stonewater. <laughs> and finally, uh, let's go ahead and hear from Gideon. Uh, Gideon is a um, he's six foot ten, no he's, um, he's five <laughs> foot ten. <laughs> Everyone was just getting taller and taller. He's uh, about <laughs> 10. Uh, it, it, very young looking. He doesn't look any older than maybe 20. Uh, kind of baby baby features. Uh, no beard to speak of. Um, kind of shaggy blonde hair. Um, although he's, he's, he's young, but he's got a very Disney Prince quality to him. Quite handsome. Um, he's kind of got very bright uh, teal eyes. Um, and he's kind of... He's, He's, you can see he's wearing like chain mail, but it's kind of underneath a like a jerkin, like a kind of leather jerkin and a shirt. Uh, he's got a kind of a half cape and uh, lots of. He's got a few too many belts, probably. He's not quite sure. You get the idea this guy doesn't really know what an adventurer is. His idea of an adventurer is he's gained it from storybooks and maybe seeing people. And this is how he thinks adventurers dress. Um, <laughs> But he's kind of he's kind of milling around. He's trying to be busy. He's kind of got a nervous energy about him, like he doesn't quite know what to do. He's trying to be helpful. Okay. Um, yeah. And as, as you're looking around, you can see now um, this this group of individuals you find yourself in the common room with, uh, give or take about a hundred, is only a fraction of the group that you travel with. Uh, you were part of the, the the lucky few who are able to get uh, refuge for the night inside Kathy Cooper's 
in. Uh, very many are still outside in makeshift tents uh, and, and, and uh, lean-tos that have been put up to keep them safe from the elements. Um, but the, the four of you are, were a part of a group that were able to, to get inside the building before it reached maximum capacity. Uh, and as you're looking around, um, it's, it is early morning. Um, and uh, you can see now uh, the gentleman who owns the inn, uh, Happy Cooper himself, uh, is uh, currently sitting behind the bar, uh, a halfling male, uh, late 50s, uh, completely bald on top with, with, with just the remnants of uh, uh, wisps of, of gray hair, uh, perpetual frown on his face. Uh, so despite the name Happy, he's not very happy right now. Uh, currently, uh, there is another in, uh, uh, halfling individual, uh, a, a woman, uh, of similar age, who is going uh, around the room uh, to tables that she can find them that have that that are still upright and have people uh, sitting at them, uh, and to individuals sitting on the floor. She's got a, a, a satch over or a satchel over uh, 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 over her shoulder and uh, attached to this large cauldron that she's kind of lugging around. that's filled to the brim with uh, looks like some steaming soup of some kind. And she's passing out bowls and filling them. She goes, here you go, dearie. Yeah, it's not much, but it's what, 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 we're doing what we can to help you out. Um, yeah, there is, uh, uh, in, in the back of the room, where the individual who tossed the table earlier uh, was addressing uh, the, the female, uh, human female. Uh, the, ta- the, ta- the table is now currently being set back up uh, by the guy who fired the gun uh, earlier. Uh, there is, and I, at this table, you can see now there is a, a half elf woman uh, who, uh, probably in, in her 30s, who's got um, short length blonde curly hair, who is set up, who is setting up, and she's got uh, uh, various vials and tinctures. Now and she's pulling out of a satchel and putting it on the table. She goes, now, if, if there's anyone who who, who needs who, who needs some healing or or uh, has some injuries from the travel on the road, uh, I don't have much, but. Um, I, I do what I can to help. Uh, she's she's kind of setting up a situation to help individuals. Um, the 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 uh, the the, the, the half orc man uh, who uh, set the table up is now uh, standing uh, at attention uh, at the bar. Uh, the the gun still in his hand. He's kind of got his arms folded. He's got the gun out. He's just surveying the room. What would you all like to do? I think I would like to approach the uh, the half elf healer. So Caitlin's gonna stand up, I think, and head over towards her. Okay. Uh, you walk over, and as as you're approaching, there is a um, uh, uh, an older woman, uh, human, who who is uh, sing, who, who's brought over a young child, uh, and the woman is currently looking at uh, at his leg. Seems like he might have sprained it or, or, or twisted it, and she's applying some kind of ointment. She's, I'll be with you in just a moment. Uh, if, uh, if you just give me just a second, uh, as soon as I finish with her, I'll be able to address your problem. Please, please take your time. Um, Gaten says he's in. He's in no rush. Very well. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, a moment or so passes. She, she wraps some some bandages around the, the kid's uh, leg, and she uh, she like pinches them on the cheek. Like, there you go, dearie. Uh, if there's anything else you need, please uh, don't don't hesitate to ask. Uh, now you, um, what ails you? What, what can I help you with? Uh, nothing ails me particularly, but the people I'm with, we have injured children and, 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 and other people, and we need some help. Um, not all of them are here at the moment, because some of them are outside, lean to some tents, um, and some of them require some quite extensive healing. We've been traveling for days, weeks, to get away from the Empire. Um, I was wondering if there's anything you can do for them. Uh, I, I'm doing as the best I can with the, the limited supplies that I have at my disposal. Um, but I, I fear uh, I, I don't know if I'll have enough to address everyone's concerns. I, I'll do what I can until my supplies run out. Um, I, I know the, the the Rose Captain or the Rose Guard Captain uh, was was getting a, a group together to to go seek out more supplies. If if you're able to help with that in any way, uh, you, please uh, go talk to him. Uh, and if, I'll do what I can for your people, but... Uh, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. They're not, they're not my people, but... <laughs> of course, I'd, I'd love to help out. I mean, where would I find the Rose Captain? Is it that my half-off brother over there? 
Oh, yes. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting this. All these people are new. They don't know anybody. Yes, that, that's uh, that's the Captain Jeredoc Redcliffe. He's the, uh, I guess you can call him the sheriff of the town. Uh, he's the he's the local law enforcement. Perfect. I'll go and speak to Jeredoc. Um, in the meantime, I will just send our most wounded to you and uh, make sure we don't strain your supplies too far. I think I, I do... Yeah, no, I'm gonna head off. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> bye. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Katie just like says we need to say it and walks off. <laughs> uh, anybody else want to do anything right now? I guess I guess um, Hansel's gonna make his way over towards the uh, was he half orc or um, the half orc sheriff? I suppose sort of sideline up to towards him. Hansel, as you make your way over to the half orc sheriff, make me a perception check. Oh dear god. Perception. Let's roll them bones. <laughs> That's a six. Okay. Out of the corner of your eye, you, you catch a quick glimpse, but when you turn to look, you don't really see what it was. Uh, there is a uh, you see a, there was a blur of red, uh, and um, as you turn to look, you see, you're trying to follow the red. You see, and you, and you turn towards the direction of the stairs that lead up to the.
<laughs> That's a ten. He looks you up and down. His eyes squint. You see him tap. He like tapping his gun on his arm. You got some balls on you. I'll give you that. Here you come, asking me, well, asking if if you could help, and then wanting to know if there's any payment involved. And here I am. I've got a thousand individuals outside. I've got nowhere to put them. I've got no way of feeding them, nowhere to house them. Look, yes, if you're able to help, there might be some compensation coming your way. The, the town of Stonewater doesn't have it, but the Abdris here, she works for the kingdom. If you get in good with her, maybe she can throw something your way. Jared, look, I think you and I are going to be firm friends. I can see it. I, I don't I don't think we will. Yeah, I'm... I'll grow on you, my friend. I can, I can see we're going to be best of pals. I will go talk to the abjurist. Thank you very much. Right. Anybody else doing anything right now? I think I'm definitely going up to the woman with the big cauldron of soup. You know what? Oh, hello, dearie. Uh, right, you know, it's not much, but we have. Oh, it's just, it's just potato soup. All we can put that, together. Uh, is that all in the house? Can I, can I get it? Do I? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. I've got a couple bowls left. Let me get something for you. Say no more. Pours your little, pours your little bowl and hands it to you. I, I really wish... We, normally, I have meats and, and vegetables to offer, but there's just so it's many like people I've got to feed. Swilling around this, like, really thin soup. Oh. Th thanks, I guess. Um, <laughs> it's it's pretty good. much water with, like, like, just a few potatoes. <laughs> it's really suddenly, like... It's, it's mm. the spices that do it. it oh, yeah, it's, it's really like the spices are great. Oh, my compliments to the chef. If it's you, then my compliments to you. It's really lovely. It, it is me. Thank you. I appreciate it. Really lovely. Please. Uh, thank you. If there's anything I can do to help, just, just let me know. Not much of a cook, but... I know mm, a couple of well, spells. If, if you get, can find any uh, suitable meats or... Uh, if you want to head over to the butcher, maybe he's got some extras left over. You can, you can bring it over. Uh, sure, um, sure. Unless you want to help organize the, the feeding, and I don't know as much you can do for helping me. Right, if I, if I come across anything, I'll surely bring it your way. No problem with mm -hmm. that. Thank you again. And I'll, I'll go and sit down and... Okay. And you, Gideon, are you doing anything at this point? Yeah, I think he would have, once the dust had settled, he would have vaulted up very heroically, faux heroically. Maybe gone and helped the table up and put all the things back. Probably knocked something off at the same time. Oh, sorry. Oh. No, I'm just <laughs> trying to help. Ha-ha. Ah, ah, ha-ha. Well, hmm. Just kind of looking around, hands on hips, surveying. Like, ah, I don't know what to do. Um, uh, I guess I'll spy either. I'll probably spy... Hansel, he looks kind of like he sticks out. Uh, at this point, uh, as, you, as you're looking over at Hansel, you can see now the the the, the lady who was sitting at the table, uh, uh, dealing with uh, uh, the potions and tinctures and, and the salves. Um, she you see she starts she starts putting her stuff back into the into a bag and she walks over uh, to Jaredoc, the, the the Rose Guard captain, uh, and I believe Orlaskin, you're uh, around there at the time. Uh, you were approaching him as, as she walked over, and you can you, you hear the, the uh, uh, as she as she approaches this. Uh, Jaredoc, I'm completely dry. There's so many people that need help, and I, I don't have anything left. I'm I'm I, I, I'm all out of tinctures. I'm all out of tonics. I'm, I'm, I've got a few bandages left. That's it. Let me see, Jaredoc. He just rubs his face. Uh, what about the wild woman? Can she help? Uh, you want to call in the wild woman? She hasn't been to town in nigh on five years. I, don't, I, I know she's got the healing power. If Perhaps we, we gather a group of individuals and send them out her way, convince her to come to town. She's got more than enough at her disposal to help with these individuals. Now, we, we can try, but... I, I don't know. I, who do you have to spare? Well, Askin's like, yeah. did I hear you need a helping hand there? Just so I sidles in. <laughs> hey there. Slides into frame. You? 
you, you need some help um, around here, do you? And he sort of does like a little, some little icicle <coughs> frost snowflakes appear on his fingers. He's like, <coughs> I could uh, help you out. What are you, what are you looking for? Well, <coughs> truth be told, uh, <coughs> there's, we are in over our heads here. Uh, the, the last big thing that happened in Stone Waters was, was three years ago when, when Farmer Harper uh, thought he had goats lived in the caves near his house. Turns out it was just a bunch of wild rats. <laughs> 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 and not a lot happens in Stone Water, and we're not capable of handling this many people. Our, our path gets here. She's just run out of all her, all her our salves and things. She's, she's got nothing left. Uh, and it's still... If you look outside, there's, there's hundreds of people that still need aid. Oh, yeah. I've uh, seen it. It's pretty bad out there, mate. But uh, <clears throat> there's a there's a woman who lives nearby uh, in the South Wade Woods, uh, a druid by nature. Uh, I haven't seen her or heard from her in a few years, but you know, she's been known to come to town occasionally and offer her services. Um, I don't know if words got to her yet that uh, the attack on Basi occurred, but I'm sure if we could get some individuals out there to speak with her, we could convince her to come to town and help, and that would help aid, and uh, sure. that would help address a lot of the issues we have on hand. And what kind of thing do you think it would take to convince someone like this to come and help us around here? Is that oh, a I'm show sure. of strength or a show of cunning or something else? A show of cool, perhaps? Well, she's never asked for payment before. She's she's a kind woman, older woman, in the late sixties, uh, getting on in age. Um, she's a bit of an eccentric one. She rarely leaves her woods, but uh, if I'm, I'm sure if you explained our plight, or if someone wants to explain our our plight to her, then she'd be more than happy to come to town. We've always had a fine relationship with her. Ooh, sure, I've been told from time to time that I have a way with words. I could try it and see see how I get on with that. But I would probably need a little... I mean, look at me. I'm not exactly a big guy. I've got some magical abilities, but I could use some muscle. you got any one like that knocking around here. Right. You're not. You're a very scrawny type. Yeah, I mean... I no think South Wade Woods are, are, are fairly dangerous. Um, my, my men don't get out there patrol very often, so there's some beasties that, that do tend to, to pop up every now and then. There must be some able bodies around here in this huge huge crowd surely surely i think gideon's been like close to this conversation and he stood there like <laughs> and i, 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 I don't think i already i think, I think katen walked straight past gideon i hear you guys are looking for muscle <laughs> oh yeah he'll do he'll do nicely look at him slap you on the on the chest like yep yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a strong empire accent dragon war where are you from um yeah, I'm from, uh, I'm from, uh, you know, over to the west, a ways, southwest. Is, is, is this the group that's going to get supplies to help the injured? Yeah, that's the plan. What, well, do, what do you think, Jared Do you reckon they, uh, do you reckon we should let them help us? I mean, oh, you and I are funny. looking them over, they, you know, do you reckon they really are kind of people? Look, uh, actually, <laughs> you are laughing. I, I don't know if you really want this guy with you, but I don't but trust him. You know, I think that, that guy over there, he looks like he's about to blow it. something wrong with him. Is he, is he, well, do we need to get, either, either, can you take a look at him? You there, the one, the one waving and, and, and looking all excited. Uh, are, are you offering the help? Ha <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Getting cover at your service. I've never heard of you. Oh. Well. Yeah, me, me neither. I'm Vice Captain Hansel. This is Captain Jared Ock. And uh, we're. Captain. Yet. Yet. Uh, tell me your story, my friend. Ah. Slayer of beasties and all kinds of stuff. Adventure. Well, he's big. He'll, he'll do the job. Let's just stick him at the front. Look, I'll level with you guys. I've got a sword. That's they. Well, I, I'm stronger than I look. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Oh, man, I love it. 
It's well, pretty good. More the merrier, right? I think uh, I think we got ourselves a crack squad for this to find this wild woman. Uh, oh, I can't a woman. Uh, I'm sorry, Captain Redcliffe. Is, is he is he really your deputy? Uh, uh, no, he's not my deputy. My deputy's right outside. Uh, you'll see him as you as you exit the building. Oh, okay, I was just confused. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. No, he he's absolutely not my deputy. Yes, we have this yet. If you're interested in joining the Blue Guard Gar or the Blue Rose Garrison, we are more we are always looking for volunteers. But there's a process you have to go through training. You have to get certified. Sounds like a lot of work. Just become a deputy. Yeah, but I mean, life experience. I mean, that it counts for so much these days. What's a certificate these days? You know, um, we'll talk about it later. Don't 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 you worry about it. I'm I'm actually an exchange student from one of the other previous towns, so I'm I'm a I'm part of the Green Rose Brigade thing. We we handle. Um, fires, um, <laughs> theft, oh, all number of different different things, you know. So I've got some skills, but we'll we'll, we'll talk about it during my interview. So, uh, how how do we get to this <laughs> wild woman, <laughs> anyways? Right. So I don't suppose any of you are from from Brookhaven, are you? No, no. Are yet. you all refugees from Ratchet Um, technically, I live over there and I point kind of in a direction just outside of Stonewaters oh well, then you should know where South Wade Wood is yes make a history check <laughs> <laughs> lived there all his life <laughs> history uh oh, wild card link sorry bear with me there we go that's a good roll. That's uh huge. Nineteen. So that was that was the wrong one, but that was deception. But yeah, minus one from that, so it's eighteen. Eighteen. Uh you do you have heard of the South Wade Woods. Uh your farm is actually not too far from there. In fact, you've even heard of the Wild Woman. Um and with with that eighteen, what you would know, uh the South Wade Wood is, is a bit north of Stonewaters, about about half a day's travel. Uh, uh, it's a small section of wood, uh, hold over from, uh, uh, the, uh, the fall, or the, not the fall, uh, there, there used to be a village, uh, nearby that, that burned down a long time ago, uh, and the South Wade wood is, is, is all that remains. Uh, the Wild Woman is, uh, kind of a figure of folklore in, in these, in these areas. Uh, she's rarely seen outside of the woods, comes out every five years or so uh goes uh to belmere goes to, uh, goes to stonewaters and goes to orangeshire but very rarely uh leaves the region you guys find yourselves in uh she's known to be a very profound healer uh never get never asks for payment uh comes to town uh usually stays for about half a day and anyone who has any kind of ailments or 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 diseases she takes a look at them she heals them and then End of the day, she's gone. Um, but yeah, you would know how to get to South Wade Wood, no problem. Yes, of course. Ah, the woods. Danger is afoot. I'm like look, looking over where he's looking. <laughs> right, so, so we should go, like now, now ish, right? By like now. Well, well, the sooner the better. Uh, the uh, the apocalypse. <laughs> That up. <laughs> it is is uh, supplies have run out, and uh, there's uh, still quite a few people that need her aid, uh, or the aid of the wild woman if you can convince her to come to town. Um, look, I, I I don't I don't suspect that I find much help around here. And I, I appreciate you all for, for stepping up, even even you. He looks over. At you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll tell you what, if, if you're able to, to track down the wild woman, convince her to come to town, uh, I'll talk with the abjurist, see if we can get some funds together. It, it won't be much, mind you, but it's the least we could do. That. You're stepping up and you're helping out. And for that, I appreciate it. I'm sure the abjurist will, too. 
Captain, we're, we're, not, we're not doing this for money. We're doing this to help the people. The survivors. Refugees. Yes. We're definitely doing this to help the survivors. Yeah, I mean, you know, you and I had a similar conversation a little earlier, so... Sort of along those lines. With money. <laughs> anyway... <coughs> right. Anything else we need to know, uh, Jeradoc, about this uh, undertaking? Well... Any dangers uh, there might be on the way? Like I said, uh, we, my, I don't have a, but a very, I don't have a very large group of, uh, of knights at my disposal, so I don't get out to the South Wave Woods very often. Uh, patrols don't go that way very often. There's not much there to, to, to patrol or, or to protect ruins of an old city that, that no longer exists. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there, there might be some beasties uh, that might crop up, but as long as you keep a vigilant eye out, I don't think there's anything that, that should be too troublesome for you. Well, I think our friend with the sword over here can take care of those beasties, no problem, like patting Gideon on the shoulder. I have to, like, reach up to pat people on the shoulder, like... He'll <laughs> <laughs> be fine. Uh -huh. <clears throat> like, like I said, I do appreciate you helping with this, and if I could do anything to help ease you along, uh, or help convince the odd woman to come. Um, he, he reaches uh, down to his belt and pulls off a, a very uh, small uh, uh, badge of some sort. It's got a, you look at it, it's, it's gold plated, it's got uh, uh, the symbol of the blue rose guard on it. He hands it to Orlaskin, hands it to you. As a, if, if she needs help, if you need help convincing her that, that I sent you, uh, just show her this. She knows what it looks like. She knows it's fine. Pop it inside my but I do need it back when you return. Of course, of course. Um, well, hey, you fellas uh, all okay with this? Should we? Any other questions? All right, let's go. I just start striding, <laughs> striding. Over. What? Did, What's everybody's know? name? All Askin. Nice to meet you. Come nice with to us. meet you, Askin. Come with us, human. We'll discuss on the way. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Large Half-Orc. Uh, what about you, uh, Mr. Money? Mr. Money. It's not my name. It might be what you call me later. <laughs> However, <laughs> I've just got to know you, and maybe we'll speak as we walk. Ugh. Maybe we won't. But it seems like you know where you're going, so turn around, keep walking, I'll follow on. How's that sound? Fully! <laughs> Straight out the door. As you all make your way towards the front door of Happy Cooper's Inn, uh, you are stopped before you, right, right before you get the entrance uh, from the woman uh, that was uh, pointed out to you as the abjurist. Uh, a tall, uh, youngish looking uh, human female, uh, blonde hair, uh, looks to be about late 20s, early 30s, uh, but to the perceptive eye, um, a, 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 a thin hint of, of uh, lines uh, uh, on her face kind of um, betray that she might be a bit older. And as you approach the door, she, she stops before you walk out and says, um, excuse me, uh, were you the individuals who uh, just agreed to help uh, the guard captain out? Yeah, hey, that'd be us, uh what I can do for you. Well, I'm Abjuris Kalindra Fairchild. Um, I... Um, put it in simple terms, I, I work for the Kingdom of Brookhaven. Um, I'm... I was stationed in the Trade Garden and was there when the attack on Bassifel happened. Um, you might have seen me on the, on the travel over here. I, I, I helped bring the refugees uh, to Stone Garden. Um, I, I just wanted to offer my appreciation for helping out with the situation with the apothecist. Um, if you, when you return, uh, please come, come speak to me again. I have a, another matter of, of great import that uh, I could use your help with. Um, it's, it's not, well, I say great import, it's, it's not much, but um, there's a town nearby, Lake Hall. Um, I, I plan on heading there uh, either today or tomorrow, and uh, discussing with the leaders there if they could potentially house some of these some of these refugees and um, well I would love to have a, a, a bit of a um, entourage with me of, of 
I don't suspect trouble, but uh, the guard captain here is busy taking care of um, everyone here, and I'm afraid I have no, yet nobody at his disposal to send to send with me. Um, uh, I, I've seen you on the road, <coughs> Miss Kalintra. You were very, very kind to the children. Um, oh, once you. we have completed this, I will help escort you to to Lake Hall. Wonderful. Well, uh, I wish you luck on your journeys uh, to... Uh, I hear you're going to look for the wild woman. Um, if, uh, if, you, if you do find her, if, if you do come, to come back, let her know that I said hi. It's been some time since I spoke with her. I quietly say to Hansel, sounds like we're in high demand, mate. It sounds like a lot of people are listening in on some conversations which probably don't involve them. Isn't it funny how we just went and had a chat and everyone's heard about this wild woman. She hasn't appeared for five years and suddenly everyone's having these conversations. People have got really good hearing around here. Maybe you've just got really bad hearing, mate. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a possibility, not gonna lie. Well, yeah. we get on with it. I'll just carry on over to the door. <laughs> I've got to, uh, give me one second. I've just got to pick something up. And um, I'd like Hansel to walk up the stairs. Real okay. quick, and 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 what do I see? If, uh, I'd like to look around the top of the stairs and see if I can see the, the tiefling. Uh, you, as you walk upstairs, uh, you can see the, uh, immediately as you get to the top of the stairs, uh, the 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 stair, uh, the the hallway turns to the right, and there's a set of it's a short hallway, and as you look down it, there's a, a door at the far end, uh, okay. and two doors on either side. All of them are closed. Um, but at the, the door at the far end, uh, you see uh, the shadow of somebody uh, moving on the other side of the door. And you don't see that from the other doors. I'd like to... Let me get my skills ready. I'd like to sneak on up to the door, please. Okay. Go ahead and make a sneak check. Come on, dice. <laughs> it's 11. <laughs> Beth Rogan Town. No. <laughs> I get to make a roll now. Yay. Come, come on, low numbers. Oh, it shows the shadow of the dice as well. Just to tease me. <laughs> as you stealthily make your way towards the door at the far end, uh, right when you get ready to reach your hand out and open it, uh, from the other side of the door, you hear uh, some noise and the door opens up. And you see the figure of this tiefling, uh, kind of just leaning up against the door to looking at you. Hello. Hello. Hi. You're right. Um, what's your name? My name's not important. What's your name? Oh, also not important. <laughs> but you see, I noticed you running really quickly up those stairs, and I thought you might be in trouble. Cause see, there's a lot of people who are in trouble, and I wondered. If you were okay, because I wouldn't be the gentleman that I am if I didn't see if a lady was 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 in trouble and let her go. So, how are you? You're right. Well, if you were the gentleman that you were, you would realize that the note I put you in your pocket in your pocket would give you all the information that you need. Ooh. Do you, could, do you mind if I can I open it? while you're with me or is this like one of those things where it's like I really like you do you like me yes no maybe uh, do, do the, or... the note itself really serves no purpose now but you're free to look at it if you like all right let's tell you what this I'm not making a very good first impression here so tell you what let's pretend we haven't met I'm gonna go back downstairs I will read the note and uh, leave it at that then, shall, shall I? <laughs> and I slowly back away from the door. It's begun. <laughs> and rotate. And then look back over my shoulder. Step inside the room and let's discuss this properly. Okay. I, I turn back. But before, as I do, I'd like to pull out the note. Is it lots of writing or a little bit of writing? If it's a little bit of very, writing, I'll read very, it. Very, very little writing. What does it say? 
it just gives it's a name. Uh, the Marquis Ellenwas, or did I get that right? Uh, Marquis Elowinus. Uh huh. And it's got a price tag, two thousand gold. I right, look up. You have piqued my curiosity, Miss. I shall continue to walk in the room. And uh, as I walk past, I will bow. Hansel, at your service, madame. Mm. I'm Kadar. That's a lovely name. Is it from around these parts? Um, it's from all over. Ooh. Okay. Uh, how can I help you? Once more, how I can help you. Uh, yep. I've received word that you are a man of particular talents. Uh, my handlers have given me permission, or given me the go-ahead, to assign this target to you. And, and a, a, a kind of mark of recognition sort of sparks in Hansel's eyes a little bit, and the playful side of him drops almost immediately. Eyes grow a little wider. Okay. Go on. This one. Is this Marquis? Yes. The Marquis Alan Winnis is a very high profile target. And there's, well, you can see on the papers, quite a significant price for this one. It needs to be done discreetly and quickly. And it needs to, make, it needs to be done in a way that makes it look like. The hand was not involved. Okay. And this, uh... This is enough for... This is enough to... To, to join? If you manage to do this properly, you will be... More than welcome into the hand. There's a bit of a ceremony that must be done, but... You managed to get this one done, and I'm sure your accolades will will be more than enough. How should I? Uh, so once the job's done, how how do I reach you? Oh, I'll know when it's done. You don't need to worry about that. Just to uh, just to reiterate, make it look like an accident. Make it discreet. Well, uh, an accident would be great, but if you could make it look like perhaps a member of the Rose Guard did him in, that would be even sweeter. Okay. I think I can do that. But I hope you can. I've heard very promising things about you. And I take the bit of paper out, and I hand it back to her. I so, say, I'm going to leave this with you. I don't want to be seen that. Yeah. She rubs it in her hand, and as she does so, it catches fire and just burns up. You're making the right decision. I won't... I won't let you pull the hand down. Remember, discreetly and quickly, he cannot leave Stonewater. And I turn and leave the room. Okay. I, I think while Hansel was upstairs, Caton would like to uh, would, would would speak to Gideon and uh, Alaska, and then just approach the group of people he was with briefly before we went. Specifically, Henry, uh, an older gentleman in the group. And um, he would say to Henry, uh, Henry, I think I. I think I found a way to help everyone out, um, but it involves me leaving. We've traveled weeks to get here, and I may not be back for a while. Will you be okay? I think I can manage. Are you sure, friend? I'll be fine, what you got to do. I think, um, I, I, Kaysen hugs him. 
and then uh, turns back and uh, rejoins your last and uh, get in. Your friend all right there? And a little heartfelt reunion or parting, perhaps? He's okay. He gets a bit worried sometimes, and he's not the warrior he used to be. I worry that uh, it might be a bit too much for him nowadays. So you're kind of like the leader of this gaggle of folks? Uh, I'm not the leader. I'm just somebody that uh, cares about cares about them deeply. Very noble of you. I think Gideon's kind of behind you, just like looking at your garden shears, like, hey, garden, like, about to poke them, like, why do you have garden shears on your back? Uh, I, I think he turns around. I think I think Kater would turn around, just like smack your finger. Don't touch them; they're sharp. You won't want to cut yourself noobling. Of course, you don't want blunt shears. How else are you going to do your gardening? <laughs> no, I just uh... <laughs> garden shears. Strange. Think weapon. about it, Gideon. Come on. Yeah, of course, makes total sense. Your name, your, your name is Gideon. Gideon Carver. Pleasure to meet you. Gideon, lesson number one: never touch another man's shears. Shears, got it. No touching of the shears. I mean, that's probably lesson twenty-six, but I can't think of lesson one right now. Yes. <laughs> look at look at Alaskan like. What what's what's happening? So I was just like. Just to it. He seems like he's anyway, what he's talking about, to be honest. Let's get Mr. Ma well, where's the other one? I uh, would have hoped for Iod at this point while you're talking of all shears, kind of sidled in and amongst the crowds, and you just, as you turn, you, you spot Hansel making his way forward towards you guys. There he is! Let's go, all together now. What shall our group name be? The, the merry adventuring band of adventurers no we're not, we're, we're, we're not doing this <laughs> for a, we're, we're okay. getting a name for a day trip it's a day I'll trip put a pin in it <laughs> Gideon how far is this place is it going to be a long time it's exactly uh, roughly history <laughs> check <laughs> well Ex exactly roughly <laughs> uh, give or take uh, depending on uh, the way you travel, uh, you can get in about half a day. Ah, oh, yes, it's about half a day's travel. Not that far. Um, it's actually it's actually kind of near where my parents live. Would you believe? <laughs> Local, are you? Okay, cool, cool. All right. W would I believe that you haven't traveled far to get here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you would. I'm not. I'm not even sure why I was sleeping in that. I think I was just in the place. I think I was just a bit tired. Um, but hey ho, here to help, Gideon Carver. You've said that, <laughs> Gideon. <laughs> why don't you show us the way, mate? <laughs> oh, we're a merry band of adventurers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, indeed you are. Uh, so a lot of you. Uh, make your way out of uh, the uh, Happy Cooper's Inn and as you step outside immediately uh, the cool brisk autumn air hits your faces um, it is the equivalent of like in October, early November uh, the, it's uh, harvest season uh, within the kingdom of Brookhaven and uh, getting what you would know uh, right the, the town of, of Stonewater has been rocked uh, by this recent influx of refugees. As you walk outside, uh, and at any given day of the year, there's about 300 to 350 people who, who call Stonewater home. Uh, as you walk outside, you can see the the, uh, the common area, uh, of the main thoroughfare, as the, as the, the King's Road that passes through. There is just a crowd of individuals that have gathered around here that are just, uh, you see tents, yeah, you see individuals just sleeping and, 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 and uh, with, with like little thin blankets over the top of them. Uh, there's, uh, there's, there's, if you see a few families that are huddled up against the side of a building, uh, 
several individuals that are just covered in, in, in mud and, and dirt from, from days of journeying from the west. Um, what is normally an empty, sleepy town is now filled with hundreds and hundreds of people. And you you would know, Gideon, there's, there's, there's no place to put all these people. Like, nowhere. Um, but you head out. And uh, you manage to make your way through the crowd of individuals who, who are now slowly waking up. Uh, and you can see there are some individuals that are, uh, of Stonewater that, that, are, that are trying their best to aid uh, these people. Uh, the, the act of war to the, to the West uh, has really shaken uh, the, the, the sleepy little hollow. And, and you know these, in the, these people who live here to be kind-hearted, and, and it's very much a, a town where everyone knows everybody and everyone tries to help everybody out. And so that you see the, like the local butcher, is, he's, he's, he's got some dried meats that he's passing out to people. Uh, there's uh, a group of individuals who you know to be uh, some prolific hunters who, are, who have come in. Who, you see they brought in a couple of deer that they, they've managed to, to kill in the forest. And there were some fires being put up, some, some, uh, some pots that have been put over some makeshift fires to help these individuals out. Um, very sad sight, uh, especially for those of you who, who witnessed the attack uh, and, and saw the, the large war machines that the, the Empire brought in. Um, but you make your way out to the city, and it's, let's say it's early morning, and you begin marking, uh, marching northward on the King's Road, uh, and making your way north to South Wade. And so I would like to ask at this time, what is the marching order, and who is in the lead? I think I think Gideon would probably be in the lead. Whether or not he's any good at it, I, he's just trying to be like look important, like he knows what he's doing. I am definitely at the back. <laughs> <laughs> That's all asking. I think uh, Caitlin has a bit of a vested interest in this mission, so he'd probably be second after Gideon. Okay. Uh, and that places me. I'd say I'll, I'll be alongside Alaskan, sort of near the rear of it but yeah all right so that being said uh gideon go ahead and give me a <laughs> a survival check there's not a, a high dc on this this is an area of the world you're familiar with and you're traveling on the road so i hope he gets lost he's, been amazing. he's lost on his way home <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh that's a 10 10 so for uh, the next two, two or three hours, uh, you guys continue northward on the King's, uh, on the King's Road. And um, around the, the two and a half hour mark, uh, you, can, you, you would see uh, up in the distance, Gideon being the one in the front here, uh, really all of you, who, if, you, if, you if you're paying attention, there, you see uh, uh, a, a caravan of, of wagons that are uh, currently making their way southward in your direction uh, on the road and and if you continue on in this in this style uh, they will eventually uh, meet up with you in the next four to five minutes I don't think that's too unusual sight I think just carry on I think they're coming the other way is that what's happening they're coming, coming towards you right okay Okay. I I'll pull. I've got a hood, so I'd like to just pull the hood on over my head. But but other than that, keep on trucking. Okay. Uh, you guys continue continue forward, and uh, a few moments pass, and eventually your path crosses with this caravan of wagons. Uh, and you can see now uh, behind it uh, is a massive column of rose uh, rose guard uh, knights, Order of the Blue Rose. Uh, there's looks to be about 50 to 60 individuals who are now traveling with this caravan, all of them marching southward. Uh, as uh, as they take up most much of the road, but you guys can kind of step off to the side. Uh, none of them pay you any mind as you're making your way north. Uh, they just march on past you. Can I ask what the what is the the uniform or, or the garb of the 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 I guess the the blue rose. What 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 does it look like? I guess their uniforms. 
well their 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 shield and uh the the the, the colors of the of the blue rose what you've seen uh mm -hmm. with with jaredoc and what you've seen pass by seems to be a like a, a dark blue and silver uh they are dressed uh, the ones you see marching are are dressed to the nines they they're, they're in complete uh plate armor um, some of them carrying shields, uh, which the shield is emblazoned with a blue rose. Uh, many individuals with, with swords, both long and short. You see some with pikes. Uh, all of them seem to be marching now. Uh, south, or all of them are traveling south on the King's Road. I think I'd probably try and just, as we get towards the back, then just try and flag all of them down. Be like, hey, uh, excuse me. So excuse me. Then. One in the back? Just one of the knights, yeah. Right. Oh. Hello? Well, it, it, you wave at one in the back, he he does not answer you, he keeps marching. Rude, huh? <laughs> Look how majestic they are. Wow. Look at that armor. Look how rude they oh, are, mate. Absolutely uh, atrocious behavior. <laughs> they're on a mission, they're on a sacred mission. They're, they've got the... What do you reckon's in that caravan? Ah, oh, who knows? Aid, medicine, food. Money, wealth, a guy. I don't, I've known from a personally that the law isn't always lawful. Do you know what I'm saying? No. <laughs> was there any indication of what this was? It was just like a plane, sort of. Um. Thing. Obviously, it's something important. But... You know, uh, make a history check. Oh. Don't. I get to roll. <laughs> uh, which button do I click? Where do I click? You should just have to double click on the the, the, the wherever your plus whatever your bonus is, just double click that and then just roll it. Pow. That is a seventeen. Seventeen. Uh, alright, with a seventeen. Uh this is uh th this is your first time in, in Brookhaven, correct? Yes. Alright. So you don't know uh really much about uh, the local militia, or, or uh, uh, their, uh, the way it's defend, uh, the way they have defenses set up. Uh, but you do know a bit about uh, uh, military, and and from your time in with the Onyx Vale, and being very close to the heart of the Empire. Uh, this possibly could be, um, like as someone suggested, uh, a cart filled with with aid or 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 food or whatnot. Um, but uh, some whisperings that you had heard uh, during your travels from Bossia Fell to Stone uh, to Stone Waters was that uh, the attack on Bossia Fell was seen as a, an attack because of the the trade agreements between uh, between the best nine free cities and the Kingdom of Brookhaven. An attack on one is essentially an attack on the other, and so this this could also be uh, a regiment being sent out to to go to Bossia Fell to, to aid. In whatever way the kingdom can help in that. Oh, interesting. So that they're heading in that direction. Towards... They're heading in that direction. Yes. Okay. Captain Redcliffe is going to be happy that uh, he's finally getting those reinforcements he talked about. Agreed. I don't know. Reinforcements. I don't know that all of those guys, those fancy knights, are coming for that little city. In the what? Middle, you know, what you would know? The what, what you, the way you saw them dressed, they were they were they were garbed for war. Yeah, I'm like those. They don't look like they're here for aid. They look like they're going somewhere to fight. Well, that that makes sense. I guess the empire is moving in from the west. They're probably gonna stop by Stone Water and push out to the west. I hope. It's gonna take more than fifty, sixty knights to stop them. Crikey. Yes, but then look at look at them. Did you see them? Resplendent, marvelous. I bet they could do a lot of damage. Ha! Very shiny. <laughs> Very shiny. Ah, if only. Anyway, should we should we continue? Do you know where you're going, Gideon? Of course I do. I live round here. <laughs> <laughs> you keep saying. Maybe you could just tell me where we're going. We're going basically. We're just gonna head that way, and then it's just whoop, whoop, and then woods. You just said I'm just gonna carry on walking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make a point, he just walks on. <laughs> oh, here we go. Merry band of adventurers we are. So, <laughs> so you guys continue onward. Um, about another hour or so. 
and you're getting close to midday, and as the sun's rising high in the sky, it, it's still a bit cool out uh, because uh, Arian, Arian, this continent is uh, pretty far north. Um, uh, all of you, let me have all of you make a perception check. Say, uh, wow, those low nine. rolls for uh, for oh, six. I see nothing. I'm blind. Twenty-one for uh, Katen. Okay. Uh, those of you who didn't roll a six, off to off to your to your right uh, towards the east. You can see um, uh, 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 distant on the horizon uh, where the the landscape begins to get a bit hilly. Uh, you, you can see several uh, what look to be like flashes of light uh, every now and then occasionally as you're, as you're making your way north. You guys see that? Over there? Yeah, I see it. What do you think it is? Flashes of light. Wait, where? Hands are over there to the right. <laughs> Hands they've been, going, they've been going for a couple of seconds now. Is this a natural phenomenon? Is this like there's a a firework cellar like over there or something? <laughs> well, the old I would firework know about. factory. <laughs> well, scan, Gideon, scan <laughs> make a history check. Yeah. That's, uh... As the man from the area, you might would know what this is. So I got my history wrong earlier. It's actually minus two, not plus ah. two. <laughs> Fifteen. Fifteen. <laughs> This is something you see on a on a on a daily occurrence. Uh, especially, uh, you can see it very well from your family's farm. Uh, this is the it's a natural occurrence uh, from the nearby Silver Speck Hills. It is uh, an, an area that is uh, about 50 or so years ago. Uh, it was discovered that it was a, a very uh, well endowed er uh, um, uh, deposits of, of silver here and. There's been a mining company that's been working on, uh, that's been harvesting it ever since. And when the sun gets high in the sky, uh, natural deposits of silver, uh, will, when the light hits it, will, you, as you're traveling up and down the King's Road, you will see uh, the light reflecting off the silver. Awesome. I should be like, oh, it's the mine. Yes, no worries, you know, normal. Don't worry about it. Just the mine. What's, what's the mine? The light, the light in the sky. No, that's the sun. <laughs> By literally Hansel. pointing at it like, over there, Hansel. Look at that. Well, I, I'm going to trust what you're saying, yeah. but... So we're not, right. in we're not in danger then, Gideon. That's the long and short of it, right? No, I mean, it might be the sun. No, no, it's definitely the mine. I've seen it before. It happens all the time. When right. the sun gets about here, it... it, it... <laughs> Right, and it, it is at this point that you do see the the marker uh, that you that you know getting to be uh, where you need to turn off of the road uh, so that you can make your way towards the South Wade Woods. Uh, oh, uh, and uh, I know you're asking, Caton. It's that way, actually, the way to go. <laughs> oh, the, the sign. Does the marker say, say South Wade Woods? Uh, no, it does not. It actually says Old or it says Belmere. Uh, are, are you sure, Gideon? It says Belmere over here. Trust me, I'm a local. <laughs> Just because you sing it doesn't mean I'm going to believe you more. <laughs> Why not? I don't know. Uh, it's kind of doing it for me. I believe him. So, Gideon, <laughs> can I can I ask, my friend, uh, what's your story? I mean, considering we've got refugees coming out of every corner, people dying. The people losing limbs, starving. You seem pretty upbeat. And I'm just wondering what your deal is, my friend. What are you doing here, anyway? Uh, well, my my parents live, live nearby. I came over to help. Helped a bit too much, fell asleep. Totally normal. Not weird to sleep with the refugees. No. <laughs> um... Sleeping with refugees? Well, no, sleep in the same in the same. <laughs> Haven't they been through enough? I'm trying to help. I'm helping. I'm lending a hand. I'm quite well known around these parts, sort of, quite well known. Killed one monster once. That yeah, but 
What monster did you kill? Out of interest. It was. It was. Look, it was. Size wise. Four. Stop me. Right up. Get it. Get it. The, no, the, the other way. Oh, bigger. Yeah, legs. 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 It and had, it had legs, guys. It had legs. And just the. Ah. Right. Oof. I don't know, but it sounds sound pretty sad. impressive, my friend. Pretty Killed impressive. Mm -hmm. Wow. Definitely. It didn't even cry once. Cry? What, what about you? You didn't cry. It didn't no. cry. Was it a baby? <laughs> shall we, <laughs> shall we, shall we move on? I'm looking at Hansel at this point. all. <laughs> so what you're saying is, if we run into something that's got legs, you can take care of it. You see legs? You think Gideon. Gideon Carver. <laughs> nice. It's a good motto. You should uh, use that. You should Did also you use that? Carver by name, Carver by nature. That sounds pretty tough. <sighs> right. Yeah. We could be called the Carvers. Well, that would be your family, mate. That would we're be not, your family, yeah, mate. Yeah. Family. <laughs> I think we're family now, aren't we? We've, we've this whole journey. Together, so quick to jump on this <laughs> naming. Bra I mean, you should be in marketing, my friend. You know, Look, you got you got names what, for what our is, party. What is marketing? What, what is <laughs> oh, come on, marketing's got to exist in this world. <laughs> what is going on here? It's supposed to be finding the wild woman. Has the blacksmith got a social media strategy? <laughs> He's got to have some like word mouth. And some flyers, pamphleting. Uh, He's got his organic growth. Gideon, why, right, don't you, I mean, why don't you show us the way to this? this yeah. This, come on, let's the, go this on. look, okay. Yes, the sign. It's the the thing. Uh, that's the marker. That's not yep. the words. Ignore the words. That's the marker. We go down here. You come go, on. You go down there. Make sure there's nothing dangerous with legs. I'm looking for legs. The carvers are on the case. <laughs> I think Caitlin's already 20 foot ahead of you. Yeah. <laughs> I've kind of walked, walked off. <laughs> now we're running hold of my sword. Hey, no. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys have turned off the uh, off the King's Road and making your way westward uh, on a, a much more organic looking path. It's not as much traveled. You, you can you can see that it, it's something that Gideon has probably traveled before, and, and maybe a few people have. But the the large paved or not paved uh, like cobblestone robed roads of the King's Road is is, is, is this is nowhere near that. Uh, you begin walking through what is essentially a field, um, and eventually, after about another hour or so, a uh, little bit little way over midday, uh, you do see um, you're approaching a, a large swath of, of forest uh, that uh, Gideon, you know this to be the South Wade Wood. Well, here we are. Look upon in terror. Maybe not terror, but uh, this is the South Wayward. Do you know anything about this wild woman? She is. Uh, she is a woman, and right. she is wild. Apparently, she has some very useful healing magic that can that help the town. And she's been there before, but not for a while. But we need to convince her yes. somehow to come back with us or after us to the town to help people. I think I saw her once. Right. Maybe. So you know what she looks like? It, it, I mean, it could have been a bush. I don't know, but she's she's druidic. Druidic. What does that mean? Like uh, I, think, I think you know, my friend. They look like bushes. Oh, like, 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 like foliage. Maybe and shrubbery, potentially. So not looking for legs, looking for bush. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think Kate again has just started walking into the forest at this point. <laughs> and uh, Kate, you probably you, you did have a run in with the the wild woman when you were much younger. Um, uh, your family had come to the town of Stonewater uh, to make some purchases, you know, as they do, uh, and you had to uh, arrive there on the day that she was there. Um, Again, this was when you were much younger. She was, uh, what you recall, a, a kindly middle-aged woman uh, who, um, uh, the, the, the one thing that stuck out to you, that sticks out to you most, that you remember most about her, is that she wore no boots, no nothing on her feet. She was completely barefoot. 
Okay. So um, <laughs> she uh, look, I was I was young. I'm not I'm not gonna beat around the bush, bush. Um, but yes, she I was very young. She's uh, I don't know. She was middle aged then. Uh, hard to tell. Maybe my memory. <laughs> Who knows? No shoes. That's the main takeaway. No shoes. Let's let's, let's go. Let's, let's go, go in. Where's Caden? Yeah. He's a, he's already. Caden. I, th I think Kayton. I think. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm in about twenty foot. I think you can see me. I'm kneeling down, inspecting the ground. You know, kind of sifting the dirt through my hands, looking around, trying to kind of track where we might be going next. Looking for shoes. Looking oh, for shoes. Make, make a survival check there. Oh, Kayton. first check. Came with a solid 12. 12? <laughs> uh, Respect. Inspecting the soil and, and the twigs of grass as you're walking through it, you, this is, while, while the path it has been traveled before, uh, what you gather is you guys are probably the first ones to take this road or this little path in quite some time. Okay. So, uh, Gideon, do you, do you know where we're going? I can't seem to find any tracks here or area where people might have walked before um i kind of look around trying to jog my memory like come on don't look stupid you can remember <laughs> <laughs> um so just i just try and look around see if i can remember right. anything make a make a perception check I'll just check C. Love, it. love it yeah love it oh <laughs> Hey That's a seven. <clears throat> seven. You n know how to get to the South Wade Woods. I mean, clearly, you brought the guys here. Um, and you've, you've been inside the woods before, not very far in. Um, the, you, you don't... There's not a path that you can see currently that, that would lead you in. Uh, that's about all I can give you with seven. Yeah. I'll, um... <laughs> I think I'll just, I'll, 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 I'll having see what Caton did. I'll get down on the floor and I'll kind of touch the soil. Like, yes, this is what it looks like to look for a path. It's the pick up a bit of grass and throw it. Yes, it's um that way. And I just kind of point straight ahead. Like, uh. I think Caton looks at. Did you just lift the soil off the finger? No. <laughs> it's. Um, it's that way, straight you ahead. All, yeah, you all continue forward, and you do arrive. You're now on the outskirts of the South Wade Wood, and it is a pretty impressive forest. Um, looking around, uh, and what is everyone's passive perception? Let me look. Uh, 13, I think I'm 11. Uh, Ten. So, so Hansel and Hayden. Uh, you follow this path as best you can. Uh, it is getting harder and harder the closer and closer you get to the woods. Um, and when you arrive on the outskirts, you're looking around. I can't there's, I don't really know where else to go. You do see uh, just a little ways into the woods, uh, um, about 20 to 30 uh, so feet in front of you, what looks to be a similar sign uh, to the ones you saw you, you saw when you turned off the King's Road. Um, it looks, it, it is, it is it's long since been knocked over. The wood is now dry rotted, um, but you can see there's still some, some bindings of rope that, that held the two pieces together. It looks to be what, at least what was once uh, a road marker of some kind. Okay, I'd like to head towards it and then see if I can dust it off and see if I can read any of the writing on it. You can actually. the The writing is still fairly legible, uh, though the the paint is now uh, in the the later stages of of, of rotting off and, and, and falling apart. Uh, but it does say the same thing the other sign says. Uh, it's a, it, it's got an arrow that points, uh, which as you're, you're holding the sign in front of it, you can uh, with your intelligence you can put it, you, you turn it towards the woods. Uh, it's got an arrow that points. It's got a uh, it says Belmere and it just points that way. I... Now, now, what you, uh, 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 Gideon, what you, what you would know, um, 
is that there is a town called Belmere. It is not located in the South Wade Woods. Okay. Oh. <laughs> All right, fellas. Which way do we go? Somebody here, tell me where we're going. Well, we're in the woods now. Yeah. We need to find the woman in the woods. So what do you propose? We wander Wild woman! Woods? Uh, Wild yeah. woman! <laughs> Just like shouting. All right. Oh, you so, start that, okay. so that's what you're proposing. Okay. I, I look, look. I've never been to see her. I've never visited her. Oh god, I, there's a dice roll there. Shadow dice. Shadow dice. <laughs> shadow dice. <laughs> I've never visited her. Look, I don't know where we get. I, I, I could get here. I told you I could get here. I don't know. Can't get to her. I don't know where she is. But we'll find it. We're the Carvers, the Carver Brigade, Carver Band. I'm still working on that. And I think I'm over there at the sign with, um, with Hansel at this point. And I'm just like, yeah. and I'm looking, I'm looking at this. Yeah, Belmere. Like, Gideon, where is Belmere? And why do we keep heading towards it? Uh, Belmere, Belmere, Belmere. Uh, it's not in the woods. That's, uh, that's what I know. So I don't think we're heading towards it, but did I think you, we need to... Did, did you do a history check on Belmer yet? I don't know if you did or not. I don't no. think it was... Go ahead and roll well, one. Yeah. Go, go, gadget history. That's an 18. No, All that's right. deception Check again. That's deception. Oh, minus three, it's 15. It's a 15. 15. So... Uh, you're hearing the name Belmere, and you, you, you're, you're trying to put the two together. You're like Southwood Wood Belmere, why? Why is this? What, is something sticking out. I don't. I'm trying to. And you, just, it suddenly hits you. You recall um, there was a. Uh, you, you remember when you, your parents or your father telling you a story uh, about the village of Belmere, and how uh, about 40 or so years ago, the, the village of Belmere was once located in the Southway, the woods. Um, but a terrible fire about 40 years back burnt the village completely to the ground. And uh, the, the people who lived there, they, they did what they could to save it. Uh, but ultimately, over the course of the evening, uh, throughout the night, they fought it and they fought it and, you know, to no avail. Uh, and eventually, in the morning, uh, were, the buildings were, were left in ruins. And uh, instead of rebuilding, uh, the villagers from there decided to move on. Uh, some... Uh, eventually traveled south and became residents of Stonewater. Some went uh, a little bit to the northeast of Orangeshire, but uh, a small few uh, moved uh, to the west towards the mountains and they settled another city and called it Belmere as well. Okay, so it stands to reason I would maybe guess that these are the signs that like old Belmere. Guess to reason. Yeah. So, um, so uh yes yeah, so there was there, there was a belmere and now that that's gone that that that's no longer there so these are the signs that old belmere there is another belmere confusingly <laughs> why didn't they just call it something new who knows and uh, that's somewhere else so this is the signs for old belmere that is why they're all old and stuff so so we're getting close Mm, yes. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a great history lesson, and I love it. Right? I genuinely do. However, <laughs> we're not looking for Belmere. We're looking for a lady in a wood, and none of that really helps us. So, do you have any, I don't know, useful bits of information to f help us find? A woman of the wild. It's possible she lives what? in the ruins of Belmere, right? Or we could at least go there and check it out, see if there's some clue as to yes. where she might I... be. Yes. Let's go like follow this arrow. And can I can I tell from the, the sign which way the arrow was actually pointing when it fell over? <coughs> Yeah, you don't need to. You don't need to make an intelligence check or anything for this. Um, <laughs> you, you take the sign, you, you're turning it, you, you, you kind of set it down in uh, to the piece below where it looks like it makes sense, and it is pointing into the woods. Uh, and now that you have the the evidence of the sign and, and hearing 
uh, the history of, of old Belmare and really looking around, um, you can st you can see now there is the faintest outline of an old trail, old road uh, that is making its way further into the woods. It is long been overrun by plants uh, and grass and, 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 and foliage of all kinds, but you, if you keep a vigilant eye out, you think maybe uh, if we stay if we, if we if we stay vigilant, we can we can continue on this path, and it will lead us at least in the direction of where the sign is pointing. Okay, uh, DM, I'm gonna say because we're about halfway through our time, should we take a break here? Everybody okay sure. with that? That'll work. Yeah. Take like a five oh. to ten minute break just to like grab a drink. And... Cool. Oh, I need to smoke anyway. Bio yeah. break. So oh my god. We will be back in about five minutes. to ten minutes, and. We will see you very shortly. Hope to see you there. What happens in Belmere? What happens in Belmere? <laughs> Stays in Belmere. <laughs> in West Belmere, I was born and raised. <laughs>
Over to you, dear. Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome back from the break. Uh, <clears throat> let's go ahead and dive right back into where we left off at. So, uh, the party of these four interesting individuals are now standing uh, essentially on the outskirts, the, the early stages of the South Wade Woods. Uh, and I believe at this point you guys were making the decision to continue forward. Am I, am I correct on that? Yeah. Big time. We're going to head towards the Belvedere. Old to the Old Belmere. That's correct. So, are we continuing with the same marching order? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. All right. Gideon, uh, being the guy in the lead, um, this... <laughs> uh, now, that you, first. now that you are within the forest itself, uh, the path has become even more difficult to follow. So I will need to get another... Uh, so either survival or nature check from you. Okay, let's see. And uh, if, if there's anyone who wants to aid in this endeavor, they will get, they can give you advantage. I think uh, I think I think Kaysen would would go up. Yeah. You, 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 you. Is, there to, <laughs> is there a way to toggle advantage? Uh, there is at the bottom yeah, left. Bottom left. Yeah. Bottom left. Okay, I think that works. Okay, so I'm going to give you a survival roll. Let's do this. Oh yeah. Uh, so that's a that's a dirty twenty. A twenty. Very well. You are able to maintain the marching path, uh, 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 maintain marching on the path as you make your way inward. And it is, it's. Just, it, I, mean, it, I call it a path. It is not much of one. Uh, the trees, all, all. It's you're you're walking straight into a very dense forest. Uh, so you're you're knocking you're knocking bushes and and, and brush out of the way. Uh, as you make your way forward, but with a 20, you are able to maintain uh, <clears throat> uh, sight on this old road that you're traveling on. I think I'm staying in front of him with my shears, shearing out <laughs> the bushes. <laughs> I think, I, initially, I'm trying to chop with uh, like one of my hand axes, and I see the shears, and I get my other hand axe, and I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> That's why you keep sharp shears on you, mate. Look at that. I should Listen, learn. Yeah. Less than 26, guys. At this point, you, you are, you're traveling onward uh, for about a good 30 minutes or so. Hansel, you hear off in the distance what sounds like a child laughing. Is that Don't like that. <laughs> no. I instantly look to Olaskan. You... <laughs> you heard that, right? Um, what a... I don't think I heard anything, mate. What, what, are, you, what are you hearing? What, what's, what's the matter? Right, so... See, I'm not, I'm not used to, to being in, in woods. But I'm pretty sure... Laughing children aren't indigenous to woods. <laughs> laughing children? Is that that's what you Yeah. Saying? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Just like looking around. Don't. Right, make, make a perception check. Okay. Yeah. The trees are full of children. <laughs> <laughs> the trees are alive with the sound of children. That is a 17. Dear. 17. You look around. Uh, you're in some thick brush. Um, at, at with, with, a, with a, a heavy, uh, in-depth looking, you know, you're, you're moving things around, you're, you're looking, you don't see any children, uh, but what you do see, uh, you start to see uh, some unnatural formations of, of wood uh, uh, popping up as, as you're making your way into the, into the forest. Uh, they appear to be um, almost like makeshift uh, Barricades, or or uh, like like some, some 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 limbs and some fallen trees have been have been shorn down, and on some you see that they have been sharpened to a point, and have been laced together with with some rope and twine. You see one off to the side. Um, you see a, a pretty uh, uh, sturdy oak uh, off in the, off to your left a bit. Uh, you can see now dangling from it 
uh, little uh, strings or, or uh, twine of some kind that have these these wooden kind of uh, figures and effigies, kind of uh, like uh, uh, almost like um, like stick figures, just hanging from the, from the limbs of some trees. Mm. How far away is this stuff from us right now? The 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 sharpened sticks is just a little ways uh, directly in, uh, in front of you, and just a little ways off the the, the path that you are following. Uh, the stick figures uh, are on a, a tree about 15 or so feet uh, off into into the woods off to your left, uh, and it's the only reason you can really see it is because they are hang, they are hanging from the limbs of a rather large like oak tree, uh, and there's not a whole lot of brush around it, so you got a pretty good sight of it. I kind of materialize my mage hand, and I get send it to go and grab one of those those little things up of the tree. We'll try to. Okay. okay. Sure. Uh, doesn't take a whole lot of effort. Uh, you materialize your mage hand, it flies, it flies off, He's, and the rest of you can see... Come on, cat, don't that button. Okay. Uh, the rest of you can see <laughs> um, uh, this, this ethereal hand reach out and, and tug, and you see it. it it's pretty well connected. Uh, you, you tug on it with the hand, it seems to be tied somehow. It, can the hand undo knots, or is it just grab? I mean, it can do some really rudimentary actions. It probably, if it's a simple knot, I probably could. Yeah, um, from this distance and not having a very good sight like on it, you can like, uh. you tug on it, yeah. Hmm. Well, whatever it is, it's tied up there. You will, you will see this up here? Strange I effigies mean, of some kind. Strange effigies of some kind. Look at that! Look at that! It's a floating hand. Ah! Oh, yeah, that's one of that's one of my my neat little tricks I can do. I sort of bring it. Oh, yeah, then I just sort of like make it so it goes into my hand and then make it disappear. <laughs> that's a pretty impressive magic. A little something I learned in the Onyx Veil. Vale. Nothing too fancy. Anyway, You're from the Ark. That's a yeah. story for another time. Really, <laughs> really. Um, but... I'm like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> really, come on. I mean, but these barricades and these things, I mean, this is not, this is weird. Could yeah, be... I don't, I think we should keep the volume down a little bit and probably shouldn't be pulling at whatever those things are. I, I've, I've learned myself that touching things that you shouldn't, you know, usually ends up in pain. Well, it didn't or didn't trigger any traps, did it? No. Traps? Why would there be traps? Well, you gotta, you know, I mean, there's big spiky wooden barricades and things hanging from trees. You know. <sighs> yeah, but I've, I've read I'm in more... books things might, you know, people leave out traps in the forest and stuff. But... See, I'm more worried about the people who made those. Have, is, has no one heard? The children. Think of the children. <laughs> what, 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 are you, what are you talking about, Handel? Why right, I'm, I'm, I'm not. Look, I'm not going mad. You like, I had people that are crazy often say they're not crazy. Just say. Right. Yeah. No, I know the theory, but most people, I'm. I don't feel comfortable in here. I'm not going to lie. This is this is. I don't. I don't like it. I don't. Okay, most... So why don't you tell us where where are these children coming from? We can go and check it out. We can put your fears to rest, and then. How does that sound? Are the children here what? right now, Hansel? Can you see them? No, 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 <laughs> no. We're not going down that road. Right, look. Alaskan, yes to your question. Um, Gideon, no to yours. Okay. And, um, and uh, Kayton, any any other smart Alec at you? Do you want, do you want to say something as well? Let's get it all out in the area. Right? <laughs> Anything else you want to say? We just, we just, we just pulling a rope, Hansel. I don't think awesome. we're too far away. I don't think we're too far away from uh, the wild. Woman. Watch it from, from, yeah, right. So if it's right, cool. Um, Alaska, <laughs> do you want to leave the way? Right, I've, I, I am done with things in the woods. I don't well, like, like it. Me? Well, leave you're the, the one who suggested it. I mean, where, All right, well, what? You tell me what where the about children are. Where, where are they coming from? 
We can I know. can I work out where did I hear the children's laughter from? And can I work out that direction? <laughs> it, it almost sound, it almost sounded like it came from your right, um, but it's weird. Like you, it sounded distant, but it also sounded like it was almost like someone whispering in your ear as well. Oh no! Hell no! Um, right. So that way. Can can, can just. Uh, Gideon, you seem like the kind of guy who is has dealt with beasties and adventurers, right? That's me, you... Gideon Carver. E Excellent. I've got a really great adventure for you, and it's literally to my right. I'm fairly certain there is loot and plunder ahead. Yeah, brilliant stuff. So how about you head off to the right and tell me what you see? Is there a path on the right? Is there anything? Is there anywhere? Or is it just like... It... You take a good moment to look. Um, <laughs> give me another perception check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's get the right one this time. That is... Uh, that's an 18. 18. Looking around, you do see what looks to be a, a path that offshoots from this little road you're on. Um, and you start looking and you, 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 you're like, hmm, I don't, maybe, you don't see any children, but you do catch an interesting smell. It smells like something baking. I lift off my, uh, my feet lift off the floor. I? <laughs> 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 um, so, um, no children. Though something is smells wonderful. It might be the wild woman. She's probably baking. Baking Come children. On. <laughs> no. The children. I don't I can't comment about the children. Uh, perhaps maybe you should um <clears throat> get your uh <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Look 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 folks, look. I hate to be the one that brings it back to the fact we have women, men and children dying back in Stormwater. So why don't we move towards the smell of bacon? Can you get in? Do you know where it's coming from? Yes, this way. I'm just going to stride like I know where I'm going. <laughs> All right. A, a few moments of travel in that direction. And it, you've been in the woods now for about an hour or so. And you're getting to the mid and late afternoon. Um, uh, you could tell it's, it's almost, it's hard like, the, the foliage is thick. The, the, over, the, the, the cover up above is, is pretty heavy at this point. It's getting kind of dark. Um, but you do eventually see a, a small clearing up ahead. And as you approach the clearing, you can see now that in the center of this clearing is a uh, what appears to be a small makeshift cottage uh, made out of mostly thatch and wood. Um, Lean, uh, built into the uh, right next to the base of a large, uh, wide oak tree. Uh, there is a um, uh, 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 what's the word? Well, not fireplace, but a uh, uh, chimney. Chimney. Uh, chimney. Uh, out of it, you, you do see a, a, a small uh, stream of smoke, and you, you can all now smell something is smelling pretty good in there. Uh, you do see now uh, from, from that from that large oak tree, and all around this uh, this this cottage are similar uh, effigies, figures uh, that you saw dangling earlier. Uh, it's uh, every tree, every limb has these things hanging from them. Oh, this is. I'll turn around. This is weird. See, wild wild woman. Right. I've, I, the stories you've heard. Like they're all, they're all good stories, right? Yes, yeah? all good. Okay. You see, Is I there... think I've read, a, I've read about something like this. I mean, the cottage was made of bread, oh, sugared God. bread. <laughs> I think, Hen I think Hens and it's scared. That's what I think. See, be people scared. who are thought... scared. Being scared is, it, it's your body telling you that there's danger, right? If you're not scared, you're uh -huh. stupid. You scared, Gideon? 
I'm Gideon Carver, Slayer of Monsters. You see, that's my point right there. Kaiten, as, what do you think? As we're having this discussion, I, I think the oh yeah, okay, the no, door no, to the it, cottage, yeah. the door to the cottage, cottage opens up, and you see a rather plump, um, old older woman in probably late sixties, uh, long, uh, almost to the to the to the, the uh, small of her back, unkempt, wild gray hair. Uh, some of it seems to be uh, uh, showing off old braids that have have long since been uh, forgotten and just just left there. You, there there are a few twigs and leaves you see sticking out of it. Uh, she's back. She, she's backing out of the door, and um, so she's her, her back is to you. She shuts the door, and you can see now um, she's got uh, a large like a, a, a box of uh, a crate of some kind in her hand, and she and she, and she turns. Uh, and faces, and she, uh, suddenly she sees all of you, and it, oh, and then drops the box, and it all just falls to the ground. Oh. Hello. Wasn't expecting visitors. Uh, greetings. Greetings. Would you like some help with your box? I'm Gideon Carver. I think Caitlin would run up at this point and start to pick the box up and put things back in there. And be like, I'm sorry, <laughs> we didn't mean to startle you. And I think Hansel was actually literally walked away from the party a little bit and started slowly walking around <laughs> to the side, just ever so slightly. Just Begins. a second hide. <laughs> Make a stealth check. Oh, nice. Uh, where are we? This is the time for the big roll. Rogue's gonna rogue. 17. 17. Alright. Let me see if she sees you. Shadow dice. Hey, good to know. Oh, come oh, on, Kyle, there we go. <laughs> there we go, Love that's it. it. That's it. <laughs> that was perfect. Thank you, Gary. Uh, she, she looks at you, uh, Kate, and as you're, as you're held. Uh, um, sorry, I, was, I wasn't expecting visitors. It's been some time. Bro. Are, you, are you hungry? Are you... Please, please, come in, come in, come in. Uh, we've got to ask, are you the one they call the wild woman? Uh, so, as, we have been looking for you. As, as you say that name, she she like turns her head to you and just kind of scarl, uh, snarls at you. I hated that name. Uh, have you got a better name or something we could call you that you prefer? Anna, Anna, Annabelle, Anna. Mm, that's what my family used to call me back in the day, Annabelle. Well, Anna, it's lovely to meet you. My name is Olaskan, and these are my these are my good colleagues and friends here, and uh, we would like to petition your aid if you wouldn't mind. Oh, sure, sure. Um, uh, please, um, what, can I, what can I help you with? Well, I don't know if you've heard about what's been going on in the local area, Anna. It's... <laughs> I haven't. Uh, I've been here in my home for... Oh, how many years has it been now? I've lost track. <laughs> it's a lovely home, by the way. I love what you've done. Oh, thank place. you. I built it myself. <laughs> but there's a lot of trouble in the local area. We've had it. There's been an attack in the west, and there's a load of refugees in town, and they need... There's a lot of injured folk, and they need healing, um, medicine, that kind of thing. And we've been told that you're a very kind-hearted woman, and you That's also true. have healing magics that might be able to come and aid these people. Well, I dabble a bit. I'm fairly proficient at it. Oh, um, that's quite impressive, actually. Yeah, quite impressive. But uh, you're in luck. I, I, I can help. Um, if... Um, but you caught me a bit of a bad time, I'm afraid. Oh, oh, why is that? Is there something you're in the middle of? Well, uh, well, well that, not, nothing important, you see. Um, it's just, it's a full moon tonight. And, well, I, if I don't perform my rituals, then, well, they get a bit angsty. <laughs> right. And I looked to the others like, uh... What, 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 what rituals do you have to perform, Annabelle? Oh, 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 nothing, nothing. That's that's too serious. Um, there, there's there's some restless spirits that that live in the woods, and well, I I do what I can to keep them from going malignant. <laughs> I think I think Gaten at this point looks to Hansel or tries to look to Hansel and kind of notices he's not there, 
Um, uh, uh, I mean, uh, how how long do these rituals take? And would uh, you be willing to come with us afterwards? Well, as long as the ritual is completed by the end of uh, the, the by the by the morning, then absolutely, uh, I'm, I'm free for a month after that. Well, we could help you with whatever this ritual is, or maybe offer you protection from these spirits. Now, protection, that, that sounds like something that would be very helpful for me. Uh, you see, I have to travel a bit ways up towards the old city or old town, and uh, um, I'm not as spry as I used to be. <laughs> um, yeah, if you, if you help me, if you accompany with me on my way there, then once the ritual is done, I'm all yours. <laughs> Let me grab a pie, and we can we can go to wherever you need me to go. Well, that sounds wonderful. What do you say, fellas? <laughs> what kind of pie? <laughs> the best ritual ever involving pie. <laughs> You've heard of uh, blackbird pie? Uh, no, I haven't. It would be my first, and I'm very much looking forward to it, Anna. I must say. I've had, I've had blackbird pie a number of times, and it sounds amazing. And I'm kind of nudging Gideon. Where's where, where's Hansel? He's over from... Um... Where is Hansel? Hansel? As you stepped away from the group, you hear another voice. I don't like it. In your ear. <laughs> no, I don't. No, I child don't. Voice. No, I don't. No, no I don't. <laughs> it's a... In, it's almost... It's, it's, not, it's another child's voice. It goes, Wild, wild Annabelle. Head so dense she can't cast spells. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. That's all you hear. Uh, I think I'd, I'd genuinely look around for a little bit. If I can't see anything, I'm gonna stay mm -hmm. crouched back down into the undergrowth. Make a perception check. Oh, my perception checks are whack. <laughs> That's a nine. Nine. Mm -hmm. uh, you do see something, actually. <gasps> <clears throat> you see, uh, as, you're, as you're looking around, you turn and you look behind you, and there's a child right behind you. Uh, oh. Ethereal, uh, small, female, about probably no more than six or seven years old. And as soon as you turn to look at her, it gives you she gives you this big grin and then disappears. Got his dust manner again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, I look to where she was and I look back at the group and I think I sit so that I'm literally looking from left to right to where she was to where the group is and I'm probably trying to spin without making too much noise I'm staying here yeah. I don't like I don't not like this <laughs> Good to know. Uh, <laughs> uh, for, for the moment you sit there, there's you don't see any, you don't hear anything else, you don't see anything else, as far okay. as that goes. Thank you, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> don't suck up to him now, Christopher. You're, oh, you're in it. <laughs> oh no, but thank you, Kyle. Is is you know, I'm saying thank you. I'm saying fuck you, and they're very similar. <laughs> Oh, children. Ghost children are the worst. Why is it like <laughs> ghost children? <laughs> right. So, uh, <clears throat> Annabelle. Um, what, yes? What, so, where should we get started? When do we need to leave? I mean, what do we need I was, to do? I was, I was, well, I was just out the door on, on my way there. We have to go to uh, the old village. Um, and then a little ways past that is where, uh, well, all, all the... Um, those in four individuals that didn't survive the fire, that's where they were buried. Um, that's where I go to pay my respects. So what exactly is it that you think we're going to have to deal with? You're talking ghosts? That kind of thing? No, no, the, the children are harmless. Uh, they, they, well, as long as the ritual's performed, at least. I haven't had one go bad in several years. Um, uh, but, uh, no, the, um, it, the, the, the village itself, um, well, it's since it's not been in use, it's become home to you know, a matter of terrible beasties. I try to go at night so they're sleeping and they don't see me. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I had a run-in with one uh, a few years back, and 
I'm about to put my leg off. <laughs> you hear that, Gideon? Beasties. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Sounds like a job for Gideon Carver. Now, uh, um, Hansel, Hansel, Hansel! I wouldn't, I wouldn't yell too yet. Too loud. We're very close to the city, the village, and uh, the, the things that live there might, might hear you. Well, I guess we'll have to go on with that. Wait the way, Annabelle. <laughs> <laughs> Annabelle, well, Annabelle would... go ahead. Would you like some help with your uh, carrying your uh... Hi. accoutrement? Oh, you are such a kind young lad. Absolutely, I would appreciate it. Uh, my legs, my, my old bones aren't quite what they used to be. The pleasure is all mine. Gideon Carver. <laughs> <laughs> and she, I'll get the, I'll get the door. The... <laughs> uh, and it is a... It, this, this, this crate she was carrying is, is pretty heavy. It weighs about, five, about about 10 pounds. And uh, Looking at it, you can see it's it's got all... It's got a few uh, like makeshift wooden bowls in it. It's, it's got a... A lot of there's some there's some roots, some, some uh, berries of some kind, um, all kinds of uh, plant related uh, 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 material, and you do see some of the, the, those effigies that you saw hanging from the trees. You do see there's about six of, I'm um, sorry, about eight of them in here. Oh, lead the way. Well, well uh, like I said, I'm not as bright as I used to be, so I'm, I might. Oh, well, she, she's she, she uh, right by the side of the, 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 the next to her door. There's a an old gnarled sna uh, staff that she grabs and she starts hobbling back in the direction of the road. Uh, funnily enough, uh, as she makes her way towards the path that you guys traversed to get here, the little off peak, off feet, um, she just with her, with her free hand she just waves her hand in front of it and all the plants and all the growth just <laughs> move to the side, clearing the way for you completely. Oh, that's uh, magic. Did magic there. That's pretty nifty. Very efficient. And eventually, uh, you, with, the, with the path cleared, uh, it is very easy and much quicker for you to get back to the, the main path. Uh, and as you turn back towards it, uh, and the whole time she, she, she's she got her hand up, She's uh, as, as she's walking, you can see the, the ground beneath her feet, which she is barefoot still, um, the plant, uh, it's almost like every step she takes, a plant growth is just growing around her. Um, with her hand out, the, the trees and all the leaves and all, everything blocking past just kind of <laughs> off to the side, clearing the way completely. And uh, uh, what do the woods look like? Are they, is, does it look alive or is it gloomy and foggy? It's, it's very alive. Much alive. Yeah. And there's sun, in, there's sun coming through the trees and stuff. It's, it's coming to, uh, especially with her clearing it up now, it is, com uh, uh, it is coming through. You can see now you're getting into the late afternoon. Yep. Turn around and... Where, where is Hansel? Did he just wander off? It's a good question. How well am I doing going through these... Like, is... I'm trying to... I want to kind of stealth behind a little bit. Oh, God. But, okay. but now I'm wondering about whether <laughs> she closes the trees on me and how well I can, I can navigate the forest. How far back are you? Not horrifically far, but like, I want to say 20, 20, 30, 20 foot maybe. Okay. Um, that far back, the, the path is still open for you, but um, as, as you're looking behind you, not much farther behind you, behind you, it is closing behind you as you're traveling. <laughs> but you're on the path, though. You're, he is on the path, yeah. Which, so if I turn that. around, I can just see him, like... If. That's an if. <laughs> And if you do, am I quick enough to be able to hide into the woods? I think we're actively going where is he? Right. Well, yeah, we're looking around for you. Fine, looking... I'll be in the woods. I'm trying to stealth behind. Okay. I will be in the forest. Okay. Well, we'll, we will, we'll continue to use your, your last stealth roll. Uh, that is... You have not been seen yet. That is very lucky for me, then, in that case. <laughs> but you will, uh, if you're staying in the woods, you will be traveling at a much slower pace than everybody else. Okay. So you might be falling behind. It is considered difficult terrain while you're in it. Okay. <clears throat> I will accept that. For those of you who are following with the white woman, Annabelle, um, it is much easier going. Uh, the, the wood bends to your will, and eventually, and not much longer later, uh, not but like 15 minutes or so, uh, she stopped. There's a, like a little 
Uh, you hear the sound of running water. And uh, she goes, <laughs> All right, well, uh, the old village is right up ahead. Um, I, I, can, I can smell them. They're, they're still there. Terrible, wretched beast. If I was a bit younger, I would have got rid of them a long time ago. What are they exactly? Um, well, um, I believe people call them goblins. Goblins? I've read about goblins. Hmm. That's something we really want to be fighting, but I guess if you don't have a choice, then, uh... This is the hero's way, Caden. What, 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 what was it again that you, uh, you bore up before Gideon? Uh, I don't know. Legs? It was hairy. Legs. Um, big. So, so, so these goblins should be no problem for you. Yes. Sure. No problem. It, it's cover. wonderful. If you're able to clear them out, there's, there's a, a lot of old, um, um, uh, memorabilia uh, from, from before that I've been, I've been meaning to get back to the village to get, but they've been keeping me at bay. So if, if you manage to, to get rid of them and get them out of the village, I'd be very, very pleased. And I can bring some of the stuff back home with me. I'm sure it shouldn't be a problem for the, the carvers of the carvering trees. I'm still working on it. The carvers of the carvering trees. What a strange name. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's not our name. That's, that's, I don't that's, like that one. Annabelle, that's not our name. <laughs> All right. At this point, <laughs> a lot of you, you can hear the sounds of, 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 the, of, the, of the running water, and you can see uh, the, 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 the path around you that she's clearing. Uh, it, it, I mean, it's clear around you. You can see a, a little bit up ahead uh, the path. Uh, the, it is. It becomes a more, uh, more natural clearing, uh, and you can see uh, the makings in the distance, about thirty or thirty or so feet ahead of you. Uh, what looks to be the remnants of old uh, foundations of buildings. Uh, you see stonework that is, is definitely uh, man planted, man, man, uh, you know, not natural forming, but like is, is designed in such a way that it might have been like the base of a housing or a house of some kind, and. Uh, who's in the front right now? Gideon? Or who's with... In, in, I, in I think front? it's Gideon and Kate in the front. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you can see now that um, this appears to be the ruins of Old Belmere, or at least whatever remains of it. Um, there is a, a small stream that passes to what looks to be two or three different buildings uh, passes to in between them, or what used to be buildings. Uh, looks like the foundations of which. Um, there is a stone bridge uh, that very, and this is only like a, like a five foot wide stream, so it's a very small bridge uh, that passes over the top of it. Um, and in the ruins of these of these buildings, you can see makeshift tents of uh, of like uh, cured leather uh, and wood. And immediately, uh, now that you've gotten this close, you can you can smell the stench of uh, of rotting meat and and just un unbathed, uncleansed. Uh, it's just a, it's a, it's a terrible smell. And you see uh, a, a, an individual, a, a, a smallish, uh, bulbous head, uh, goblinoid-like creature that is, that is currently uh, walking across the bridge in your direction. And as he's making his way across, he's like looking around, sniffing the air. Looks in your direction, goes, ah! take the bow out, <laughs> fires at you. <laughs> I'll be like, stop there, gobble up. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> at this point, I need everybody to roll for initiative. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Well, shit. How do I do that? Double click initiative. Uh, yep, you, on, your, on your character sheet. Do we need to have uh, anything selected to do so? No, uh, no. You just on your character sheet. Just double click on um, the initiative button. Alrighty. That's oh, that's a big roll from Gideon. That's a two. Uh, 
Right. Oh god. Was, was the sheep able humongous. to be... Uh... Yeah, right. Yeah. Where, what? Aha! The arrow. Oh, yeah, it's... Right. Thank you. And it, or you can right click it and then kind of fit the screen. Right. Or minimize. Going over to the battle map. <gasps> You're doing Ooh. it, Peter. You're starting to believe. It's happening. Aha. Just oh, put just my. Uh, I'll share it with you again. I, okay, I can zoom out. Okay. Right, and the battle tracker is comma tracker. Ha <laughs> ha! There we are. Wait, yeah. where's that? What's that? Combat tracker. Go, let me go ahead and roll my initiatives. Look at Hansel up there. What do you mean up where? I'm down at the bottom. No, with your with your twenty-one. Oh yeah, up there is in up there. Yeah. Oh, I'm dying, apparently. Uh-oh, are you dying? I don't believe so. <clears throat> oh, there's a goblin. There is a goblin. And this is the one that fired at uh, Gideon, who was in the front. Who's behind Gideon? Oh, I, where do you guys want to be at on this, on this map? I think that seems right. For yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think Katon was with Gideon. Okay. I was in. A, I was way back. <laughs> How do I know? Just, I'll probably be behind him. Probably in a bush around here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. All right. So let me start this off by targeting. It'll let me do it. Gideon. There we go. And making his attack. So this. Uh, this goblin, as it's walking across the bridge, goes, ah! takes the bow out and fires it at you. That's a 19. Uh, I assume that hits. Yeah. Uh, why do I have two? Uh, why still, do you have Why am I dying? That's just, I don't know why I'm dying. Oh, in well, combat track. Uh, you're, what I can see, you're not dying. Oh, wait, I see, I see what you did. Uh, for some reason you got 21. Okay, no problem. I can fix this for you. Yeah, I, I don't know you why put, you're wounded. You put points into your wounded. That's what it was, yeah. Oh, uh, right. So, Gideon, you take four points of piercing damage as this, this uh, arrow is shot towards you. Um, immediately afterwards, the goblin looks around us and starts screaming like a monkey um, and then <laughs> begins running back in this direction and will use... 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and we'll use his bonus action to hide. So, uh, was everyone's passive perception? Uh, 13 is the highest. Uh, so, uh, you, uh, those, uh, those were the passive perception of 13. This goblin, you see, turn back and run and goes to dive behind one of the, the one of the rock structures, stone structures of the building. Uh, but you saw where he went, so he is not hidden. I see you, uh, goblin. <laughs> Hansel, you're up. Okay, so movement speed. Yikes! 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 Um, I guess five, ten, fifteen, twenty. So if I was to move up to around here, and that's. I'm gonna. That's it. I literally. I'm. I'm gonna. I. I will hold my action then in case a goblin. In case he comes out within that distance to be able to take a shot. But that's my right. action. I'm staying. So you're just running through the stream. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. It is cold on your feet, and it is not that deep. It's only about a foot or so deep at this point. Uh, so you're able to make it across, no problem. But bone, bone uh, action, I, hide if I can, though. But afterwards, but yeah. All right, uh, go ahead and make that stealth check. Okay. That's a 19. 19, that's pretty fucking good. Um... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, 
as you run your way over in that direction, uh, uh, oblivious uh, to what's around you, uh, you do notice. Uh, let me get my map pulled back up here. Let me get back and forth. Uh, a few more individuals that were currently currently out of view. You see directly in front of you. Now, the 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 line, uh, the shape of the buildings around you, like the the stone part of that wall there to your north, to the north, yeah. and to the, to the left of you, are only about. Uh, at some point, it's it's very um, uneven, but at some points it's up about two feet. A uh, few points it gets up about three feet, but it's mostly like ground level. Uh -huh. uh, it's, it's the remains of a, of a destroyed building. Uh, but directly in front of you, you do see. You do see one, uh, two, three more individuals in front of you. Mm -hmm. And as you're running across the stream, uh, you heard a deeper sounding goblin voice uh, behind you. And uh, I'm sorry, no, you did not. I take, I take that back. I lied. <laughs> <laughs> that child is fucking with my head again, whispering uh, in my ear. It's not, it's, it, it's not behind you. It's uh, about... Uh, ten or so feet to your left. Okay. 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 <clears throat> um, and is there anything else you want to do in your turn? No. I'm gonna just right. scuttle up, scuttle into that that bush, <laughs> dive in, become one with the shrubs. <clears throat> End of go. Right. Uh, at this point, uh, one, two, three, four, five. Guy runs over this direction, uh, so he goes next. He runs off uh, towards the bridge where the other guy was at. Uh, the other goblin was at. Looks across the bridge, sees the the lot of you approaching. Uh, is you can tell now there's a there's a sound of an alarm of, of alarm in the base. Now you, you hear several uh, goblin voices <laughs> calling out. Uh, this guy here uh, stands on the other side of the bridge with his short bow. Will fire. The only person he could see uh, in, direct, in direct range right now, which is Gideon. It's been a pleasure, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to your new character, Adam. Yeah, right? Uh, that is a seven. So um, he runs forward, he, he fires the arrow, and with your with your sword, you just uh, knock it out of the way. Ooh. It does not, does not land. Oh, it's so like tough. Gideon. <laughs> Adventurer, oh, yeah. get in cover. Oh dear God! No, 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 no! You, no. you hear, a, <laughs> you hear a sound uh, to your right there, uh, Caton. As from the inside of the building next to you, uh, a, a, an individual approaches another goblin and runs forward with you with a with a uh, uh, a broken, uh, chipped uh, looking scimitar and swings it at you. This is not okay. A six. Uh, so just it, it, it hits onto your 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 your, your leather protections, your hides, whatever you got, some kind of yep. protection you got going on. But the, the sword is just old and and, and chipped, and it just, it just it is unable to penetrate. Uh, but you, uh, as he's doing that, you can hear behind him one more coming out. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> shit the there are more coming. <clears throat> Uh, it's gonna run to, it's gonna run over here and jump up on this, on, on the side of this building here, or this little bit of, uh, rubble, and also go to attack you as well. Same brother of action economy. Can't do meta magic yet, this is terrible. Also on the Peyton. Uh, that is a 12, which does hit you so you take whew, eight points of damage as so you're, you're, you're distracted as as this one runs for you uh, towards you uh and taking the opportunity this one jumps up onto the building and uh while you're while you're busy struggling with that guy uh swing to manage to catch uh, an opening right near around your neck and you feel a sharp pain as this old uh, uh. ragged rusted sword uh, manages to nick some skin i'm sorry 12 hits you what are you wearing? Armor. Puny mortal. I'm wearing farmer's leather, boys. 
<laughs> I have more AC than you do on the Soul Strike. Tough hide. <laughs> Alright. You guys can get me just some scale at some point. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I meant to say, uh, at the end of his turn, he's going to use a bonus action to disengage. Oh my and God. as he as he does that, he jumps off and then runs back where he uh, back over by this tent. Uh, goblins! goblins <laughs> this is where it ends, boys. It was it was fun. Yeah, man. <laughs> One and done. This guy's gonna run up to here on the side of this wall. He's gonna peek up over the top and fire at you, Hansel. Can he see me? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you're right. He he can't see you. Uh, he's gonna fire past you towards uh, Alaska. Let's just hope he doesn't get, get lucky and hit the tree. I'm in. <laughs> Knock me out like an apple. Oh, uh, oh, oh geez. Geez. Right, So you take four points of damage. Uh, luckily, because he, he didn't see Hansel, so he, first person you call. Uh, this one is going to run forward to next to him. Uh, and is going to take his bow and also fire at you. Uh, actually, no, I'm going to be you, Gideon. This is rough. Bring it on. This is seriously rough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I think I've dropped the box by this point. <laughs> what is a natural one? This wild woman going to help us? She better. I've got the, I'm using the box to defend myself. Look, <laughs> oh, I, got a, I, I, meant to, I didn't put her token on the map. My bad. Uh, wild woman does AoE. Lightning do, strikes across all of them. I already do, hope she can fight. I do have her. She can heal, uh, right? I, yeah. Uh, put her on here. Holy hand grenades. I oh, I didn't, I didn't transfer her token over. Well, she's going to be... Do you see this, this, this green square here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Oh, True to the forest. Just, yeah, not so bad. Green. So green. Uh, and then... Let's see here. Alaskan, you're up. Okay. Kill him. <laughs> but what... Uh... Can I see... Like, I don't know how to do things on this. Um, how do you ping things and whatnot? These... Uh, if you want to ping on the map, you just click and hold, I believe. I want to, like... These guys up here. Oh, God. There's pointers, but that's drawing an arrow map. I thought it get messy. I want to I wanna throw an ice knife at this guy. Goblin 5. <laughs> okay. Oh, you, remember how to, you remember how to target? Uh, I don't remember how to do things. Oh, okay, Joe. Sure. How do I do the spell? So, under your actions uh, for Ice Knife, if you hit the um, little magnifying glass, and then you want to hit the attack button. Sword icon. Oh. So it's plus two, but it should be plus five, so it's wrong. Right. So that should be 21. Alright, I can fix that for you. I'm pretty sure it hits. Shazam! Oh, absolutely that hits. So uh, the damage. He takes. Amazing! One yeah, point of damage, but then he and the other one have to make a. A save. Oh, okay, what save? Uh, deck save. Deck save, alright. So for two for both of them? Go for goblins. Mm, yep. For goblins. So dexterous. So that is a pull this thing up here. That is a sixteen and a seventeen. They both pass, I think it's half, right? For ice knife. Half, half half damage? Yeah, so that's half whatever. Six, okay, so six, cold six each. points of damage to five and four. Uh, let's look at these guys here. Five and four. Uh, uh, this one here, uh, five, the one you originally targeted with it, seems to uh, take the brunt of the uh, brunt of the hit, uh, and it manages to to stay standing. But the guy next to him, number four, uh, as was it, I can't explode or had, had what's the AOE from? Yeah, so I like I sort of. Materialize and then a little like just knife of ice. And just, 
fling it out, and, it and then it explodes in like a shower of Five. shards of ice. And so as it stabs into the one, it, it manages to withstand the explosion. The guy next to him completely obliterates. Whoa! Mm, we did it. We did indeed. I, I mean, there's not really anywhere for me to go, so. <laughs> Struck a pose. <laughs> mm. I just kind of. Yeah, I stay where I am. Leave it there. Alright. <clears throat> Next on the list is Kate. Uh, so, you, I'm, I'm worried. I'm bleeding my neck. Uh, and I look to the two swords at my side. And I don't draw them. I pull the shears from my back. And uh, I click them out, and they come apart. There's two different weapons. Nice. And I turn around to the kind of goblins inside of me. And I'm like, you scum! And I'm like, Phew! and I just windmill, windmill uh, attack him. So two weapon fighting. Um, I try and slice him up. Right, go ahead and make your attack. <laughs> Rock'em, sock'em, robots. Yeah, Rock'em, sock'em. Keys between your fingers and just go through <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, what's that? Uh, skills, right? Mad skills. No, where are my actions? Um, short sword, one. Two. Pew! Hello. That's a oh, twenty-four. Yes. Is that is that for the first one I roll roll to hit again? Or do I? Yeah, you you you, roll, you you do both attacks, right? Oh well, do your damage first. But hold on, before you roll your damage, for some reason, uh, you got deleted off. Off the combat track. Let me get you back on here real quick. Cool. That's how stealthy he is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're real from nowhere. Because you might kill him <laughs> with his attack and he can attack you. Alright. Right. So you had targeted the one next to you. Goblin 7. Yeah. I don't know why I believe you don't think. Alright, go ahead and roll your damage. <laughs> Devastating. <laughs> 4. <laughs> Alright, and you follow through with a second attack? Uh, yes, I do. I windmill over with my second, second, uh... Your, your first blade. hit connects, uh, and, and buries deep into the shoulder of, of this one goblin. Uh, as you fall through with your second one, he manages to, to uh, have enough wits about him to throw his little scimitar up and block it. <laughs> and it's holding, holding him at bay. <clears throat> I think I, I just yell into his face, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like staring down his goblin. <laughs> the ultimate battle. It's a lot one way from Akane. All right. Next up on the list is mysterious no to no token to wild woman, uh, who is standing at the back with you, Alas. She's a pure, filthy beast. Uh, she is going to uh, let me get her character sheet pulled up here. Come on, wild woman. Yes. F him up. Do him in, mate. She is going to Let's flee. She got out. <laughs> oh, she's gonna. She's just gonna use a cantrip. Uh, the one in front of you. She's gonna point her finger at you. Uh, you creatures of, of hunger and and despair. Uh, and she's gonna cast her uh, fi cast a cantrip, firebolt. And that's going to be. Goblin here. Oh no. If I can, for some reason, why is my bargaining not working? Alright, I'll just roll the damage. Fuck it. <laughs> uh, I got the power, I can do that. So, she is going to. Natural one, really. Oh. <laughs> She's old. <laughs> We're this gonna die to the goblins. And apparently blind, too. Uh, but that's, that's a cantrip. So she can, oh uh, well, no, no, she can't. Can you, let's see, can you cast a spell if you cast a cantrip, I think? You can cast a, you can't cast two spells. Right? Oh, well, you can be cast... a bonus action. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, she will, as a bonus action, if she has it, if I gave it to her or not. I did not, never mind, I was going to say bonus action, healing word, but I don't have it. <clears throat> well, no. That's all she's doing on her turn. <laughs> uh, from the tent to your left, uh, Hansel, which uh, luckily you're you're hidden and he cannot he cannot see you. You see this larger uh, goblin individual step out, 
uh, who immediately turns, hearing the sound of commotion uh, nearby, and begins running in this direction. Um, this is going to be interesting. It's going to stumble over you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what I'm going to do for him is he's going to he, his plan is just to run directly towards Gideon. Uh, but being this close to you, I'm going to go ahead and have him roll her perception check. I'll uh -huh. see if he sees you. Yep. Uh, which is a natural 18 plus. Lots of lots of numbers, right? Uh, <laughs> plus. Was with oh, uh, what, what did you roll on your stealth? A 19. 19. So you rolled a natural 18, but his wisdom is a minus one, so that's a 17. Oh, uh, oh bush boy! So he doesn't see you. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna stop right right about there, uh, and he is going to uh, see the, the the three other individuals with the wild woman uh, off on the other side of the of the little creek there. Reach into his back and pull out this long javelin. He's gonna rear back and chunk it uh, towards. I'm gonna make a roll and see who he targets. I'll roll a d4. Oh, on, a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a one, it will be Gideon. On a two, Caton. On a three, Orlaskin. On a four, the wild woman. That is a three. So, Orlaskin. Better than Caton, to be fair. <laughs> oh, wait. Was it, was it, was it Caton? Oh, it was Orlaskin. No, no, it, was, it wasn't Caton. <laughs> You know, that it is a... Oh, for <laughs> God's sake. I'm definitely dead. <laughs> <laughs> so you take... Brazilian damage. What? Oh, huge! What? <sighs> you take... Nat natural one. <laughs> you take... You lucky son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you take... Yes, two I'm points. so lucky that I didn't get what instantly was... killed. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he went to go throw it, and as he did, he, he, he uh, stepped forward and kind of stumbles over uh, someone who's hiding in the bush in front of him. Oh he God. fell over my shoe, like my, my boots. Oh, yeah, I'm like Peter Malark in a tree. <laughs> so you do get hit by it, uh, but it could have been a lot worse. A lot worse. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is looking bad, guys. Uh, not even you're up. Um, I oh, think oh, seeing oh, this big... Big guy stepping out of the bush. I'll um, I'll my, get my sword out, and this sword is like, it looks way too big for him. Like he looks like he shouldn't really be able to lift it, but he's he's just gonna kind of action pose, like he's just <laughs> Gideon Kava, and he's gonna move. <laughs> he's gonna move to here. Yep. Um, and then for and then it's control click the goblin boss. Is That's that right? correct. There you go. Okay, and I am now targeting the goblin boss, and I'm going to um, I'm going to try and hit him with my great sword. Go for it. Damn it. Try. There you go. Double click. Big time. Oh, that's a that's a, a shitty yeah. twelve. Yeah. Uh, he 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 kind of chuckles as you. And he's got like a deeper voice he's, as you run forty. <laughs> And just brings his uh, uh, manages to pull his scimitar out of time, at the, uh, in time to to block your great sword and knock it away. He just smirks at you. I'm like, ah, oh, get your cover. <laughs> End of turn. End of turn. <laughs> You're just a fucking Pokemon now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get your, give me a cover. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this guy's gonna come back around, and with his short bow, he's going to change his target from Gideon to Caton. Unable to target. Oh, that's what. It, okay, I get. Uh, all right. So it's not let me target you right now, but I'll just roll the damage or roll the attack. I uh, rolled a. That's a six. I, I assume a six does not hit you. <laughs> but, yep. I mean, it's close, but no. <laughs> uh, and that's all he can do on his turn. Uh, Hansel, you're up. 
Save us, okay. cancer. So, oh, the tree beard over here is um, spotting a, a, a goblin combo. Can I, am I able to hit with advantage because I'm hidden? You are hidden from him. So, I'm going to roll with it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hello. What was that? Uh, sorry, that's went you all over the place. I did two attacks. Let's roll the, let's roll again. Well, it, just use it, the first only... roll, man. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you... sorry. You, you hit, so go ahead and roll your damage. Right. And then I need to... And it's sneak attack. That's correct. Let me show you. There so you I go. I will roll my... So... Nice. So Hansel is... <laughs> what you see is basically nothing. And then the eyes open like Zoolander popping out of the cave when he's mining. And <laughs> from his hip, the uh, the short bow just fires out from his hip straight into the, uh, the goblin's chesticles. Um, nice. For for ten points of pure oh, damage. Oh yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and <sighs> bonus action disengage. Mhm. Mm and I'd like to. Ooh, Nelly, I'd like to run up to I guess past there to behind this wall actually almost just like to here. Okay, you can do that. Yeah, and that's my my go. Hands how, out. How do you do the little measuring rulers in, in this one? I don't know, I just did it. You just hold control and just click something. Yeah, right. control and, and yeah. <clears throat> this guy here is going to... I don't know, I gotta, I gotta keep on... I gotta stay on top of this music shit. Uh... Um, all right, this guy here is going to, uh, at the end, uh, at the end of, uh, at the beginning of his turn, he's going to run over here, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, uh, next to his, next to his leader, and he's going to attempt to attack you, Gideon. Rest in peace, brother. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this is bad. Oh my god. Alright, so you take, take nine points of damage as the goblin comes running forward with his scimitar and uh, kind of leaps forward towards you as you're engaged uh, with his boss and just gets a, gets a slash at you that just penetrates your de uh, your defenses. So you take nine points of damage. Uh, Status gonna, heavy. <laughs> uh, and then he will uh, is a bonus action to disengage and then move behind the boss. Uh, this guy here is going to run around to this side of you, Peyton, and attempt to follow through with, his, with another attack. Uh, that's going to be a nine. Does a nine hit you? I don't think it does. No, it doesn't. <coughs> they deflect it with a shear. Uh, he is kind of like a passing uh, glance at you as he runs past you. He, he tries to hit you, doesn't land. Uh, bonus act can disengage and then run, finishes his move across the water and just kind of get in. Coward! <laughs> Uh, as you say that, this guy here jumps up on the wall next to you and attempts to attack you again. <laughs> no, Kaiten! Oh man, Another get the Prince Adventure. He's got it. <laughs> oh man, he's good uh, on his shears. Uh, continues to disengage, runs past you. Uh, 10, 15, 20, only gets about right there. Is, is he coming to the Gideon party as well? He's going to the Gideon party as well. Oh, he's so flanked. Right? Or are you flanking them? <laughs> the flank her or the flank e. Uh, let's see, that's going to be a... <laughs> that's a... Ooh, well. Gideon, you, you, just, you got a dog pile of goblins surrounding you if, right G now. If Gideon wasn't there, this would be a great ice knife situation. I just want to put that Yeah. Out. Oh, I bet. Last <laughs> you're up. <laughs> um, Use your ice knife. You didn't win on the stand. Do you take damage on a good. save? Do you take damage on a save? Take half damage. Yes. Do you? Worth it. I am going to... <clears throat> you see me sort of swirl my hands and these three little magical darts appear and I <laughs> fling them out. First one is going to be at Goblin 7. Okay. And then 
Uh, whoever looks the next most injured. Goblin 5. One at Goblin 7, one at Goblin 5, and one at Goblin 8. <laughs> the three ones in front of me. The ones um, in front of you. Yes, so... So 8, 5, and 7, you said? Yeah. So how do I... Do multi dudes. Well, I will. I will. I will. Let well, me well, maybe, maybe can clear this up a little bit before making it easier. Uh, Goblin Seven only had one health point left, so he is gone. Okay. Uh, Goblin Five uh, might survive, so go ahead and uh, target him first. Actually, you can target both at the same time. I don't know why I'm telling you this. Right. All right. So five takes two damage. Five takes two damage. It misses. Gets him right in the back. And the other one takes also two damage. Also two damage. All right. So that is that one had not been hit yet. So two points of damage. In my head, Kyle has got the uh, the minority report set up. He's looking <laughs> at all these different screens. <laughs> I, I really do. I really do. <laughs> I keep track of everything here. Uh, all right. That's that's your that's your turn. Anything else? And, I, and I'll I'll move. Shit, how do I move myself? Just drag your token. Yeah, just drag your token. It's doing like a, a, a ruler thing. That's, yeah, that's what it's supposed to do. Oh, okay. You, you make the move and then I approve it. Over there. There you go. So I'm like partially covered, I guess, hopefully. And then my turn, please. Alright. Kate, you're up. Yeah, uh, Katen's gonna run... Uh, run down to the river. Jump okay. in. As he jumps back, as he jumps in, yeah, he swings. He comes down with his left cleaver um, to try and take out Goblin Eight. Okay. Um, so let's roll damage. Uh, how do I target something? Control. Control. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's a big. That's a big. That's a big hit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. Is it big damage? Come on. Well? Yes. yes, it is. Eight points of damage to eight. All right. Uh, with one cleave of your of your uh, sheared uh, short sword shears, whatever you want to call them, uh, you, <laughs> you manage to separate this goblin from his head. Oh yes, epic. No, and, I think it, and I think as I'm spinning around, I draw the other one through the water, skimming the surface, and attempt to. Uh, Cleave it up the middle. All right, right go for it. Five. E. Uh, Twelve. Well, let me see if that hits. I believe it does. Let me double check. No, it does not. <sighs> Goblins are tougher than you, Kaya. How's that feel? <laughs> oh, dude, I'm a farmhand. <laughs> this feels appropriate. How's that? Feel? <laughs> Fury on that guy. Yeah. Granny's gonna save us, it's okay. Yeah. At the end of your turn, uh, <clears throat> she goes, let, let me try that again. Uh, turns, and the one you just attacked, uh, she is going to uh, point a finger at it, and you see another burst of flame shoot out as she tries a scorching ray this time. That will be a. Let me find it. That's a character sheet everywhere. That'll be an 18. So an 18 definitely hits. So it takes six points of damage, and as as the flame hits it right uh, dead in the chest, just you see the, the flame just begin to emulate all around it. Just, it just starts burning and it crumbles into a, a, a blackened husk in front of it. Oh wow! Ah! It's burnt up in front of me. All right. Goblin boss this time. He's still smirking at, at Gideon. He's going to turn towards him and then with his scimitar attempt to attack him. Need some luck here, boys. It's fine. Is it fine? With his first swing. Oh. <laughs> That's with his 21. Not even a bolt in his pectoral can stop that swing. Uh, you take five points of damage, Gideon. Oh. As the first impact of this of this nasty uh, chipped scimitar sinks into your into your flesh for the second swing. Oh right, okay, cool. Cool. Oh, no. 
cool, cool, you are not cool, still alive. Cool, 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 cool. Tight, cool. tight, 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 tight. That is eight points of damage. That is dying. As you see, Gideon slumped to the, the forest floor. He then turns and points the scimitar at you, Aiden. Point back. Point it wherever you like, mate. I did, I just, I just had to, like morph his hand. <laughs> Gideon, I need you to make me a death saving throw. Uh, okay. It's, I'm guessing it's that button. That's a fail. Oh. Da, I do like da, 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 da. <laughs> this guy's got 5, 10, 15, 20. Who needs a jab from the other here. goblin? Uh, on the bridge here, uh, surveys the scene and is going to fire at the wild woman. That is a 22 to hit. The wild woman takes. Eight points of damage. Oh, fuck. Console, you're up. Oh, well, the person who was something. flanking, the person who was flanking, which was going to give me some sweet sneak attack, is no longer flanking. <laughs> His body is now on the floor. So, um, I drop to one knee, take aim with the, with the hand crossbow, take a brief in, and, uh, that's an 18. And which one did you, are you aiming at? I'm aiming straight at the goblin boss. All right. Uh, with an 18, let me make sure I got this all correct. Uh, because this guy has a little, little cool thing. So an 18 would hit, uh, but uh, uh -oh. he will use his reaction to redirect the attack. Uh, when a creature of the goblin... You, you didn't hide at the end of your turn, right? I did not. When a creature the goblin can see targets with an attack, the goblin boss chooses another goblin within five feet of it. The two goblins swap places, <gasps> and it takes Ooh. the attack instead. <laughs> oh! So he, 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 he turns, he sees you fire at him, and as he does, as you do, <laughs> the guy grabs the other guy and just pulls him in the way and jumps out of the way. So oh, go ahead and roll man. your damage. That's awesome. Friendship, friendship's not massive in the old goblin community, huh? <laughs> that's, uh, that's, uh, five. Damage to uh, Goblin uh, Three and then, it, in that case, it did, and it kills. <laughs> oh, so, no. he gets him oh. right the road. He just starts gurgling. <laughs> oh no! I can imagine oh, that as well. Like, get over here! Like, put it across. Like, and as he does it, Hansel squints at the Goblin <laughs> and and nods, and then bonus action hide. <laughs> oh, go, go ahead and roll it. Sneak oh, it down. God. All right. Uh, this is our life now, guys. That is the 23. <laughs> here for the world. Rogue life. Yeah, no, man. Well, asking, you're up. Um... Let me think. I guess I will. I can see this guy on the bridge, right? You can, yes. Uh, actually, no. I'll target the boss because I don't want Gideon to die. So I'll, I will cast Frostbite on him, and he has to make a save, I believe. Okay. What save? Which is a con save. DC 13. DC 13. Uh, so he rolled a 16, and he has a he has no bonus to this con, so he does save. <laughs> Can anything happen? Nope, it's a country. Okay. I'll continue to hide in this little corner. Alright. Caton, you're up. Uh Caton's gonna run and jump to Gideon. Um uh, touching his body with with his and okay. he's and I'm gonna grab him by the face and uh, hold the back of his neck and cast pure wounds. We have a healer! <laughs> yeah we do! <laughs> I need a healer! Take that, wild woman. 1d8 plus my spell ability modifier. Um, uh -huh. So, I don't know what my modifier is actually. It's wisdom, but I'm not sure what. It, it should be on your spell. It should say plus on the, yeah. on literally what? on your abilities. So, whatever your on plus the is. On, yeah, on your abilities, <coughs> on the main sheet. Yeah, so you so roll a d8 and then add one, or whatever it's it is. It's a 1d8 plus one. 1d8 plus one. 
Okay. Um, so this is roll D8, right? Yep. Here comes a health bomb. Five. Five, five huge points of healing. Stabilizing. I'll take it. I mean, it could there be one. Go, still gets him up, right? So you you gasp you get you gasp and get a, a, a breath of fresh air as you see your friend Peyton standing beside you. Uh, <laughs> get him, uh, it's not wild like the stories. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the wild woman is going to, uh, with a bonus action, cast a. Let's see, I may spell it. It's only used one spell. She's good. Uh, in, uh, in, where can I do this at? Uh, a five foot cube I can see within range. Alright, cool. Well, let's draw a five foot cube that I can see within range. And she's just gonna, uh, she's gonna point towards you, uh, Gideon. Uh, she's gonna lift up her staff. And, uh, even though your eyes have just opened up, you, uh, you, and you're still on the, on the ground, you, you feel the earth beneath you kind of. Uh, the grass beneath you uh, start to, to twitch and, and move, uh, and you begin to feel some of the the the, tw the, the, the vines begin to uh, creep towards your body as he casts uh, healing spirit uh, right on top of you. Oh! Ooh. Quick, run inside and out of it repeatedly. <laughs> exactly. I think they right. they fixed that literally like, recently in 2020. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, Sucks. So, Damn it. Uh, uh, oh, uh, or let's see when you until the spell ends when you whenever you or a creature you can see moves into the spirit space for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there you can cause spirit. Okay, so whenever you start your turn, you will get some help. <clears throat> that was a bonus action. She cannot cast another spell. So Goblin Boss's time is going to uh, continue running. Uh, over to the bridge here. Oh, pussy. And is going to, <laughs> as, he's, as he's running, he's going to turn, and then with the second javelin he has on his back, he's going to throw it towards uh, you, Caitlin. Okay. I'm watching out for this. Catch it! Oh, why did that roll? Hold on. Some, uh, something, something happened that wasn't supposed to happen. Lucky, though, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> I, shall, I shall allow this DM. <laughs> he, 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 should, he shouldn't have rolled that with advantage. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Tell you what, uh, critical I, I, hit this. <laughs> Come on. I, 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 see what I see what happened. Uh, he was still targeted on Gideon, who was, I hadn't moved the unconscious thing yet. So, uh, I mean, I will roll this again. I will, I will scratch that one out. Um, he's prone. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> this is not me on target getting he's not target getting uh, uh totally javelin at you Peyton. so that's a 17 that's a 17 hit yes it does <laughs> you take five points of damage oh. as, <clears throat> as the second javelin is thrown at you uh and then at the end of his turn he's gonna he's gonna uh Tap the goblin on on that's in front of him on the shoulder, and then point to the direction behind him. I imagine as well. What I tried to do was trying to kind of <laughs> try to clap, clap the javelin in my two inches. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, get in. You are now up. You are prone on the ground, and you take. <laughs> or I'm sorry, you don't take. You restore another six points of health. I'll take it. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna stand up. Use half movement. Stand up can't reach him so I will I will nod at Caton and just play oh thank you um, and then I will go get him Gideon okay, I will go 15 I'll go 15 to there uh, as I'm running I'm going to pull out a hand crossbow uh, a hand crossbow, a hand axe and try and weg it at him nice have it um Actions. Uh, hand axe. There's no difference in terms of it being thrown. Is it? Oh yeah, there's a little bomb. I guess that's thrown. Well, yeah. If, if your deck is the same, then, then another wouldn't be. As a team, however, is a miss. Yeah. <laughs> Goes off to the distance. <laughs> right. 
Uh, this guy here, seeing you run towards and throw an axe, is going to take his short bow and fire at you. That is a 19. Is a 19 hit? Mm-hmm. Right, you you take eight it, points right? of damage, Gideon. As I'm running for. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> uh, and then, as the as the as the hit lands, he's going to turn and thirty. I mean, running this direction. Oh, get back here, Hansel! Got you're up. Uh, Hansel is going to jump up and run to here, or at least the square near there, mm -hmm. and then is going to take a shot at the goblin boss. With nice. his bow of shortness for a 12. Did you get advantage because you were hidden? Uh, no, because I'm well. I ran out into the open, didn't I? I oh, ran out into right. the open, that's why. Yeah. So, um, but no. So, that's a shot and a miss. And that's my turn. That's literally right. it. Alaskan, you're up. Oh, God, this guy needs to die. Okay, I'm gonna. Oh shit, I'm gonna run out to here. I think. Okay. And just check my character sheet. How big is the cone on my breast? Is it ten? I think or 15? it's fifteen foot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna like. I think you probably see like a sheen of like ice go across my face and then I just like open my mouth and like put my claws on the bridge and just go ah, and breathe a massive wave of like <laughs> icy shards across him. Um, Alright, that's a constitution save, correct? It is. Come on. He rolled a nine. <gasps> he oh! Failed. He takes 12 damage! Yes! yes! <laughs> So as, and chill uh, out. As, as this, as this, as this small statured, orange feathered dragonborn steps forward, <laughs> sinks his claws into the bridge and and, and bellows out uh, in I assume draconic, and it's, you see this icy breath come forward. How do you want to destroy this goblin boss? Yeah, I think just like the, all these shards will stay like doo, 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 until like he just like gets one in his eye and he's like. <laughs> <laughs> sort of like a little, um, collapses down and onto the floor. Sick. With, 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 with a pelt of ice just battering into his chest, and then finally the, the one right into the eye. Yeah. Uh, as, as, as Just as the goblin boss is, is turning to run with his, with his compatriot, uh, the, the shard gets him, and it just instantly. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Dragonborn! <laughs> just like. <laughs> Shaking the whole frost off of my <laughs> scales. Ethan, you are up. Um, I am going to uh, run past Gideon. Okay. And I'm going to draw the one knife I have sheathed at the base of my back, and I'm going to throw it at this goblin <coughs> here. Um, dagger. That's a fourteen. Is AC fifteen? Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, just, uh, I mean, uh, uh, that was thirty feet in like kind of a second. I'm like, I'm knackered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, anything else on your turn? <laughs> Come back here, you coward! <laughs> he is down two spots now. Uh, let's see. Ooh, can't you do that? Yeah, I'll let her do that. that I, it's not exactly how the spell works, but I think it's cool. Um, it's, uh, it's a 150 foot range. Uh, so uh, the wild woman is going to. Uh, Hey, you're not getting away this easy. Uh, she slams her staff into the ground, and you see this vine start slithering across uh, the ground. You see, you see it pop up into the water for a bit in the direction of the goblin. Uh, it needs to make a dexterity save, which... He rolls a natural 20. <laughs> wow. 
Uh, oh, uh, that's sick. Uh, Goblin is covered in lube. So this, this vine, as this vine shoots the battle around, wrap, the wrap, wrap around the goblin, he just... <laughs> Gideon, you're up. Oh, Gideon, goddamn Carver. Um, we need one of those natural twenties right now. Barely clinging to, uh, barely clinging to consciousness. I'm just gonna take a big old, big boy breath, and just run with ungodly speed past Caton. Just like, tick, 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 anime style. Right, let's do. Uh, some stuff. Target this thing and great sword. Go. Oh my god. What is Yikes. going on? Zoinks. I'm gonna fuck it, I'm gonna action surge and try again. I'm okay. loving this. <laughs> fuck this. God damn it. Um and then and it's double click on the damage. I actually haven't damaged anything, so I think, yeah. There we no! go! Oh, Gideon goddamn Carver. Instant death. <laughs> Just like, as, ah! as, as, <gasps> as he dives out of the way of the, of the, of the vine and it's airborne, you see Gideon come running from behind and with one mighty swing of the sword, uh, cleaves this goblin in twain in midair. Nice. <laughs> Gideon <laughs> Carver. <laughs> and with that, combat is ended. Oh. Hansel sat by the fire in case anyone was awake. He just gave up after all three of them ran by. Hansel's just down there, toasting some s'mores. I think Gideon kind of falls to one knee and like drops his sword, like, uh, uh, like bleeding very heavily. <laughs> <sighs> I think I've still got an arrow stuck in me as well. Oh. Is, that healing, is that healing spirit still there? <laughs> it, uh, I think it lasts for a minute. I'm, I'm just like gonna run over it. Everyone <laughs> 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 runs in it and just jumps down. Well, that's just like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So for the next minute or so, uh, so that's, that's, that's nine more rounds. Oh uh, yeah, you guys can with, with that. All of you together, if you decide to jump in it, you go back to it. Uh, and easily get Hansel's back up not been hit once, so he's chowing down on some rations. Just <laughs> having a meal. Uh, well, while they're healing, go ahead and make me an investigation check there, Hansel. Ooh. I'm going to ask Kaden for 18? Uh, Eight? Yeah, I'll, I'll, right. I'll pick you up. Alright. Well, with an 18, and I'll share this with you guys here in a minute, but I'll go ahead and tell you what you find. Uh,. <gasps> The as, as the rest of the guys are healing up through the, the wild woman's healing spirit, uh, around the campfire, uh, and especially uh, in, in the nearby goblin tank, you find uh, what amounts uh, total altogether uh, about 50 gold pieces. I'm sorry, 60 gold pieces, uh, and a, a small leather satchel that uh, contains, uh, at, at a cursory glance without counting it, about 500 silver pieces. Okay. Uh, you also find uh, uh, in this in this particular uh, encampment area, uh, a black velvet mask that has been stitched with silver thread, a cut of cloth from what looks to be some a pair uh, uh, might have come from some gold vestments, mm -hmm. uh, an embroidered silk handkerchief, a gold locket with a painted portrait inside, a pair of engraved bone dice, a small gold bracelet. And uh, a vial that contains some co some light blue liquid. And I will share this. Uh, and so, if you guys look on the top right, right next to the combat tracker button, it's the party sheet. Uh, I will drag the parcel over to the, the party sheet so you can see what all you got. Ooh, nice. If you click on the party sheet and go to inventory, that's that's what was in there. Except the problem is that Chris got it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, I am I'm. will tell you what I reveal in a minute, because I'm not going to... I hate to tell you this, but I you're not going to get the full, the full list. What a surprise. <laughs> uh, for, for the quicker the record, you die and you roll someone nice, the better. <laughs> for, for the record, right, what you are seeing 
All right. What you are going to tell us we're seeing, and not yeah, yeah, yeah. You could yeah, yeah. Press so what, you, so what you're you? getting is there's thirty gold pieces, no silver pieces. Your uh, there's a black velvet mask. You're going to see the silk handkerchief, the gold pocket, um, the gold locket and necklace, um, and the blue liquid. You are not seeing the bone dice. The um, and you're not. My character yeah, does not. My character does not believe him. <laughs> no, no. Basically, uh, twenty gold pieces and the bone dice are missing. That's you it. will have to deceive me if you want that to be the truth. Well, you don't. Well, then you can. <laughs> I will give you. A, that's fine. If I'm you're going to try and screw everyone over, you have to you, deal you, with you, this. You may roll a deception check and you may roll an insight check. Yes. Okay. Oh shit! I'm not good at insight. Uh, where are we? Skills. Uh, deception. Oh god, that's low. That's a seven. <sighs> but that's even. <laughs> 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 You're counting on you, Alaska. You're counting on you. If only you, uh, I could have had some assistance from my party man. <laughs> not everyone, everyone trusts me. Um, all right. So basically, I keep an extra twenty gold for myself and a bone dice. Hell, this is how it's going. It could have been much worse. It I'm too busy not worse. dying. Oh, we're so grateful, Chris. Um, I'm too busy not dying. <laughs> so I've, I've carried okay, Gideon. I've carried. I'd like to carry you over to the uh, uh, the kind of healing well. We, we will bathe yeah. in its light. <laughs> We're just I'm, there, like, I'm oh like, yeah. It's like it's not like it's not like the stories. It's not like the stories. <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, they had a lot of legs, didn't they? Uh, yeah, legs. But we survived. Uh, just kind of quiet. Whole lot of legs there, mate. <laughs> we were just sitting. Where, where, where's Han Where's Hansel? You alright, guys? Oh, I mean, what did what did you what did you, what did you find? You wouldn't believe the amount of things. So much gold. And I throw oh. down the thirty gold pieces. Um, I throw down. There's this mask. That looks pretty interesting. It's silk handkerchief. Those aren't cheap. It's a gold locket, a necklace. And then this really funny little blue liquids. Is anyone good with liquids or like potions or whatnot? Tinctures? Oh, uh, maybe the um, maybe the uh, wild woman knows something about this. You taste it. It should you, it should become clear. What I've known no, I've about any poison. potions at uh, the Onyx Vale. Uh, I mean, you could roll an Arcana check. Let's give it a poke. Ooh, I'm proficient. And that's another low roll. That's a ten. A ten. It it definitely has the appearance of a potion. Uh, as far as what type of potion, uh, the with a ten, you're not really sure. Um, it could be a, it could be a, a wide variety. It could be. Um, yeah, that's what you get with a ten. Yeah. Well, it's it's got to be a potion of some kind. But what kind? Couldn't tell. Not without trying it, anyway. So how do you reckon we are uh, going to divvy this up? Do you feel like it should just be, what, five each, or...? We should give it all back to Captain Redcliffe. We have a whole bunch of refugees back in Stonewater that we need to look after. It's the right thing to do. I agree. I agree. You know what? So do I. I think we shouldn't keep anything that doesn't... I think we should redistribute this wealth for people who need it more than we do. <laughs> You're right. What about some of the other things? This, this mask. I mean, what does the mask look like? Sorry, what does the mask look like? I mean, I mean, kind of. <laughs> uh, so it, there's, there's not a whole lot of. Um, it, 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 it looks like something that that was once probably very beautiful, um, but uh, it is now covered in in dirt and grime. Uh, uh, whatever. Um, purpose it might have ser served is uh is is no longer really apparent it it does it does appear to be the the, the thread itself uh that that uh is, is embroidered around the edges uh does appear to be um, of a much finer quality uh uh not cloth uh, of, of fabric mm -hmm. 
Uh, but as far as what the, what the mask was or used to be, it's, it's hard to tell. Okay. Well, if you guys don't mind, I mean, some of the things that I, I've learned to do is, is I'm, I'm used to not being seen. You know, um, like you might have seen, I've, I'm, I've managed to avoid getting hit once. Um, Take the mask, Hansel. Uh, Take the mask. Right. <laughs> we don't, Hansel we don't need another like speech, it. Hansel. <laughs> Take right. the mask. The mask is mine. I I'll mean, I'm surprised. I'm surprised you're willing to give up your share of the gold. So I think it's only fair that you take well, the mask. Well, I mean, sometimes you've just got to do what's good for the people, right? And um, if this is what little I can do, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Chris, how can you? <laughs> oh. Oh, brilliant. Oh, okay. So, I, I, I guess I... Episode one. <laughs> right. I, I, I'm, not yeah, sure I how, I'm not sure how long you guys wanted to go. I'm... I'm... Whatever you guys want. Uh, we normally wrap up sometime shortly after 11. Okay. Whenever we have a good stopping point, basically. And Which is... I gotta look that up real quick. Oh, oh, shit. <laughs> and I, said, um, I, I, th I, I think then we could probably just round off with, our, you know, I'd like to approach Annabelle. And yeah. Annabelle, <clears throat> we, we've, cleared, we've cleared the goblins out. I, I, I think... Uh, this area should be fine for your ritual, right? Oh, well, it's, it's, it's just the way he's had is, is where, the, where the children, where the people are buried. Uh, but if it... and, and you guys can see it now. Um, uh, just past these buildings, uh, you see uh, uh, a lone uh, tree that uh, it, it's, 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 it's a bit of a clearing. And, um, and this tree appears to be uh, actually... Uh, None of you would have seen this kind of. It, it, this, this is a, uh, this tree stands out from the rest, as uh, it is. Uh, the, the leaves are a, a, almost a uh, a bright pink, uh, something you, 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 none of the other trees in this forest uh, have. And uh, at the base of this tree, there is a uh, a large uh, rock that you can see now. There's um, a shrine, a little makeshift shrine that has been made, and uh, on either side of the rocks, you see about a total. Uh, a, on uh, all together, six on one side, six on the other, about a, a dozen uh, markers, uh, grave markers. Uh, and this is as, as the sun is beginning to set. Uh, and this is uh, Annabelle steps forward. Uh, Annabelle steps forward and she goes, I suppose now it's time to do the ritual. I do appreciate you for getting me this far. And <clears throat> for the next hour or so, uh, she sits down and what what was what she called a ritual is uh, to you guys. What you see is she goes uh, to each grave marker one by one uh, and takes out one of these effigies and sets it down. And um, uh, uh, while also within the box materials, uh, you can see there's uh, a few uh, trinkets uh, and knickknacks that. Uh, looking uh, now that you see she's doing this, you can see and, and there's names uh, and and ages next to each of the marker and all of these. Uh, individuals here are uh, between the ages of 6 and 12 that, that died and that have been buried here. And uh, most of these trinkets that she's put next to the grave are like toys that she's made out of wood or, or stuff like that. And as, the, as the, the sun now sets, you can see in the distance as she's doing all this stuff, uh, behind the, the large pink uh, tree with the pink leaves, you see a dozen or so uh, uh, ephemeral figures, uh, all children, uh, standing uh, in, right in the edge of the woods, just uh, watching as she's doing this. And as she finishes, uh, they all begin to fade from view. And the ritual is complete. Oh. I think I'd just be watching her silently the whole time. Sort of. Not trying to interfere. I think Caitlin's got his arms crossed, but there's a tear in his eye <laughs> as it runs down his cheek. <laughs> I think Hansel is watching my children suspiciously. <laughs> uh, with the ritual complete, uh, she turns to the rest of you. She goes, well, now, now, now that that's done, uh, wh where do you need me to go? Lead me uh, wherever my services are required. Perhaps we and... need to spend the night. Maybe at your house before we head back. 
That sounds like a wonderful idea. We, I've promised you a pie. <laughs> oh, that blackbird pie. I can see it already. With that, the four of you turn uh, with the, the wild woman, Annabelle, and return to her house for the evening to have pie and to rest and recover from your first day as full-fledged adventurers. Yes, now, we will back, we will call the back, I, uh, As we walk back, just before we, we call it, uh, Hansel turns to Annabelle and says, Nice to meet you. I'm Hansel. Sorry, we've not met before. <laughs> 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 oh man! Yeah, I guys. Forgot. Amazing, <laughs> awesome guy. <laughs> awesome. Well, well I don't know about you guys, but that was awesome. I had a lot of fun. That was really cool. Yeah, that was great. Thanks so much, Carl. Oh. Thank you guys. Had fun. Thank you yeah. very much, dude. Yeah, we nearly died. <laughs> uh, that's why it was so yeah. fun. It was awesome. I love almost dying. Yeah, that was oh, that was wicked. Awesome. So, well, look, yeah. One of many, right? One of many. Yeah. One of many. Yeah. Already looking forward to the next one. <laughs> so the next one is uh, there's going to be a, there's already a schedule up on our Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, uh, but we'll also drop it at the bottom of Twitch. And the next one is Thursday, the twenty fifth of June. Mm -hmm. cool. So we'll be doing Eldron every other week, and in between weeks we're doing our normal Leodos campaign. So we're now doing every week. And huh. it's always Thursday now, so it's less confusing for everyone, including okay. us. Absolutely <laughs> thirsty for more than Carl has got his own God's yes. uh, as well. So yeah, please so go much and sub follow so on Twitter. So much content. content. Yes. Oh yeah, if you guys want to. So the 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 Legends of Eldron game is is happening concurrently. Uh, with my other game that I stream, Gods of Ether. So there are two adventuring parties in this world that are that are going about and, and causing uh, ca uh, chaos and havoc. And <laughs> who knows what happens if they find out about each other? What, what is I your uh, Twitch? What is your Twitch channel called? Uh, the Twitch is uh, uh, if you look for Irrational Radio on Twitch, Radio. Twitch okay. TV slash Irrational Radio, you will find Gods of Ether. It is um, it is also a bi-weekly stream game, and it is on the opposite. Uh, week schedules uh, from this one. So if you watch this game Thursday night, like next this this coming Monday, will be the next God's Eve game. We'll put a link below, and we'll put we'll put a link in the Twitter and stuff. So if you want to check out Carl's stream, please go and support him on his God's Eve game because I'm sure it is awesome, like this one. <laughs> Brilliant. Awesome. Well, so cool. yeah, thank you very much, everyone who's watching. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, friends, players, and uh, we will see you next time in uh, Leodos once again and in another woodland adventure Woo! <laughs> yes bye guys thank you very much see you, Good night. See you next time see you folks bye, bye. bye.